Orimura Ichika, a typical pervert, recently got admitted into the Infinite Stratos Academy. The immature fool experiences difficulties on his first day at school because all his classmates are girls. Yamada Maya, the assistant homeroom teacher, enters Ichika's class and introduces herself accordingly. While she speaks, Ichika recognizes a childhood friend of his, but struggles to gain her attention. It all becomes weird when he is called first to introduce himself to the class. However, the shy idiot tries his best to stay cool, but another lady smacks him in the head. The lady in question is none other than Orimura Chifuyu, Ichika's senior sister. After Ichiki recovers, he wonders what his sister is doing in his class, but soon realizes that she is the homeroom teacher. After Chifuyu reveals her identity, her students yell in excitement because she is quite a legendary figure. Sadly, she does not fail to scold Ichiki for his dumb behaviors and gestures in class. According to the history block, Orimura Chifuyu was Japan's representative for the first IS pilot competition. One day, she suddenly retired and disappeared. In the present, Ichika wonders why his sister is a teacher at his school. As time goes on, Maya gives a lecture about the term IS. According to her, the said term stands for Infinite Stratos, which is a multi-form suit from Japan. It was launched about 10 years ago to enable humans to move in space, but it has been halted. A treaty forbids the space equipment for warfare, and now it is being used solely for sport. The IS Academy is the only organization that offers IS pilot training, and it accepts students from all parts of the world. After hearing this, Ichika expresses shock. He recalls the fact that only females can pilot the IS, and he is the only male who can. After Ichika's first class, some students gather in a corner trying to summon the courage to speak to him. It gets worse as Ichika overhears their conversations from a distance. Huki arrives to save him. Huki leads the way to another part of the school so she can have a private space with Ichika. At first, she struggles to maintain a good conversation with Ichika, but she smiles when she gets complimented for her hair. Meanwhile, some students watch all that goes down from a distance and disperse at the sound of a bell. After break time, Ichika sits in class troubled over the fact that he needs to memorize an entire manual. Maya, who is present in class, draws closer to him because of how worried he looks. When asked what's up, he replies by saying that he does not understand anything in class. This alone leaves Maya shocked, but she soon finds out that the other students are lost too. Chifuyu enters the class and first approaches Ichika to find out if he studied a particular book before being enrolled in the academy. However, Ichika ends up giving the excuse that he misplaced the said manual. A slap to the head is what the useless schmuck receives as punishment from his sister because of his unwavering carelessness. Even at that, Chifuyu promises to give Ichika another manual, and she makes it mandatory for him to finish the manual before the weekends. The rest of the students' mouths are left wide open because of how Chifuyu is strict with her brother. During a free period, a student, Cecil Olcott, gets close to Ichika and tries to converse with him. Cecil is the narcissistic type, as she is quick to reveal her status as the representative of England, who placed first in the academy's entrance exam. However, Ichika manages to burst her bubbles by asking her dumb questions about a representative contender student. Shocked, Cecil manages to maintain composure as she prepares to explain the said term. While explaining things to Ichika, Cecil does not fail to remind him that she is of higher status than he is. When she is done, she walks away and offers to teach Ichika a thing or two if he comes crying for help. She halts at some point after Ichika reveals that he defeated his invigilator during the physical testing exams. This alone shocked Cecil because she thought she was the only one who defeated her invigilator. As time goes on, Ichika leaves class and heads to his dorm room to change and rest. After he gets in, he finds out that he has a female roommate. His roommate is none other than Huki, who steps out of the shower thinking that another female is in the room. As the senseless bastard tries to make sense of his situation, Huki beats the shit out of him and ends up chasing him out of the room. Now other girls are outside the door because of Ichika's issue with Huki. Their numbers scare Ichika, and he ends up begging Huki to let him back into the dorm room. Finally, Huki allows Ichika into the room and seeks to settle things with him. She speaks of some rules that will govern how they will share the bathroom and other resources in the room. Although the idea of sharing a room with a lady is quite weird, Ichika plays along since Huki is his childhood friend. The following day, during lunch break, Ichika sits beside Huki enjoying a meal at the cafeteria. Huki seems quite pissed at Ichika because of yesterday's incident, but she gets more pissed when other girls sit beside Ichika to eat. Sadly, Chifuyu's presence at the cafeteria makes Ichika and the other ladies wrap up their eating so they can attend a class. While in the first class after the lunch break, Chifuyu speaks about electing a class representative who will participate in tournaments and also attend student council meetings. 
When she calls for volunteers, two ladies stand up and nominate Ichika for the position. Since no other nominees are called, Shifuyu proceeds to pronounce Ichika as the class representative. However, Cecil opposes the idea because she feels it is disgraceful for Ichika to lead her. In the end, she challenges Ichika for the post of class rep, and he foolishly agrees thinking that he can easily overpower her in a duel. Shifuyu approves of the contest, and she tells both contestants to prepare for their duel in the coming days. The following day, Rise informs her brother in class that he will be getting a personal suit since there is no spare suite in the academy. Upon hearing this, the other students express shock because it is a big deal for a student to have a personal suit. Cecil, on the other hand, does not hesitate to mock Ichika again, claiming that she will be victorious in their duel. She outlines the fact that she has a personal suit too since she is the cadet representative from England. According to her, there are only 467 ISs in the world, and the ones with personal suits are indeed elite amongst the human population. This alone makes another student dive into the concept of core for the respective ISS. The student emphasizes that the technology for the cores has never been disclosed as they were all built by Dr. Shinonono Tabane. After hearing this, Ichika realizes that the doctor behind the cores is Huki's elder sister. While the student speaks about cores, Huki's mood in class changes, and she looks the other way. It gets worse when Shifuyu tells the whole class that Dr. Tabane is Huki's elder sister. Pissed, Huki calls her classmates out warning them that she is not her sister. The way she speaks makes Ichika wonder if she is not on good terms with her elder sister. Moving on, Maya begins a lecture session in class about the relationship between humans and ISS. She speaks about the IS's unit which encloses its wielder's entire body within a special energy barrier. While she explains the said concept, dumb Ichika fails to understand what she is saying. After Maya is done with the lecture, Ichika notices that Huki is still in a bad mood. Out of concern for her, he tries to persuade her to join him for lunch. At first, Huki lashes out at Ichika and ends up punching him to the ground, drawing the attention of other students. Although Ichika struggles to recover, he still insists on taking Huki to lunch. In the end, Huki lowers her guard as Ichika grabs her hand, heading for the cafeteria. While eating lunch, Ichika begs Huki to teach him things about the ISs because he feels he might lose to Cecil if he fights her in her condition. At first, Huki hesitates to respond but when another female student arrives and volunteers to teach Ichika, Huki opposes her and tells Ichika that he will teach him. Later that day, after school hours, Ichika spars against Huki using a wooden sword. He easily becomes weak within an hour of training and this irritates Huki. In anger, she questions Ichika about how he became so weak over the years. Before Ichika can get any words in, Huki informs him that he will train every day after school. Later that day, in the female's locker room, Huki stops for a second and wonders if she is being too harsh on Ichika. She has reason to believe that Ichika has changed over the past six years. Back then, Ichika and Huki trained outside a dojo with a wooden sword. This memory makes Huki think about the time when Ichika held her hand earlier in school. However, she snaps back into reality and tries her best to ignore the thought. About a week later, lots of students sit around an arena waiting to watch Cecil's battle with Ichika. Sadly, Huki informs Ichika that his IS has not been delivered yet. This alone bothers him for a while, but he loosens up when Maya tells him that his personal IS has just arrived. While the said suit is being revealed, Maya tells Ichika to prepare for his duel. Upon seeing the suit, Ichika expresses shock, but he soon prepares to mount it. Ichika wastes no time to mount his suit, and when he does, Huki tells him to come back with a win. After hearing this, Ichika smiles and flies off to the battle arena, ready to fight Cecil. At the battle arena, Cecil brags and tells Ichika to apologize to her so she can end the battle swiftly. Ichika's ego does not let him consider the option, and as such, he takes a blast from Cecil's cannon. Their battle begins and Ichika is seen trying to regain himself after Cecil's initial strike. As much as he is on the defensive, he struggles to keep up with Cecil's speed. At some point, Ichika deploys a sword and flies heading towards Cecil's position. Meanwhile, Cecil mocks him for deploying a close-range weapon since she is using a cannon. Another thing is that Ichika's energy barrier decreases gradually as he uses speed to evade Cecil's attacks. At some point, he flies at an insane speed in the quest to dodge some projectiles from Cecil, shocks the students present at the battle arena, and even Maya, who watches from behind a screen. At some point, Ichika figures out an important detail about Cecil's fighting technique. As he dodges the last two projectiles, he falls victim to a trap set by Cecil. Luckily for Ichika, his suit saves him and prevents him from taking damage. After the smoke clears out, Cecil realizes that Ichika has been fighting against her using his suit's default settings. Now, Ichika has a hang of his suit, and he means business. The weapon he is using is the one Chifuyu used in her prime. With this in mind, he alters the form of the weapon and uses it to engage Cecil in another round of combat. Scared, Cecil launches a bunch of projectiles at Ichika, but he fails to hit her target. 
Ichika sees through all the projectiles and moves swiftly to dodge them. While at it, he prepares a nasty attack to take Cecil out once and for all. However, his suit runs out of energy when his sword is barely a few inches closer to Cecil's suit. Sadly, the battle ends and Cecil is pronounced the winner. After the duel, Ichika meets up with his sister and questions her about why he lost. It's because you used the barrier nullification attack. Chifuyu says to her brother. In the meantime, Maya hands Ichika a fat manual that contains all the information he needs to know about ISS. Upon seeing the book, Ichika sweats heavily since he hates reading. Later at sunset, Ichika and Huki walk together heading for their dorm room. On the way, Huki reminds Ichika that ISS training lessons will begin soon and she would like to teach him. Ichika smiles at the idea and voices out saying that he is more comfortable with Huki than the other girls. This alone engraves a smile on Huki's face, and she looks forward to training Ichika. Meanwhile, Cecil is somewhere in the shower, wondering why she feels funny, even though she is the one who won the duel. The following day, all students from Hauki's class gather at the training arena to begin a training exercise. Chifuyu instructs Cecil to deploy her IS, and she does accordingly. When it is time for Ichika to do the same, he experiences difficulties at first, but he gets the hang of it on the second trial. Cecil flies into the atmosphere first while Ichika follows after her. While in flight, Chifuyu tells Ichika to fly faster, since his suit is way faster than Cecil's. Cecil, on the other hand, notices that Ichika is having issues with increasing his flight speed. As a result, she politely offers to teach Ichika after classes if he agrees. Before Ichika can get his words in, Chifuyu instructs Cecil to demonstrate a special landing style. Foolish Ichika follows after her to perform the same special landing style. However, he loses control of his IS and crashes into the ground. After the smoke clears out, Ichika powers down his IS and tries to catch his breath. This time, Huki is the first to scold Ichika, but Cecil pushes her way just so she can get to him. Cecil is now acting weird towards Ichika because she behaved rudely to him in the past. Now, she expresses concern about his health and wishes to personally take him to the infirmary. However, her plan fails as Huki arrives at the scene and tells her that Ichika is fine. Within seconds, Ichika finds himself in between two hot girls arguing about his well-being. At sunset, a transfer student gets into the academy, looking forward to a wonderful experience there. That evening, Ichika gets celebrated as the new class representative of his class because Cecil willingly withdrew from the position. Huki, who is present at the time, looks pissed because Ichika is quite popular amongst women. Her mood gets worse when a lady from the newspaper club tells Ichika to pose for a picture with Cecil. As time passes, Huki and Ichika retire to their dorm room to rest for the night. Here, Huki aims a pillow at Ichika and tells him to look the other way so she can change into her robe. She slides out a barrier that will block Ichika's view if he gets any pervy ideas. The sound of Huki's zip moving up and down makes Ichika feel uncomfortable, but he maintains composure until Huki is done changing. After Huki is done doing her thing, Ichika gazes at her and compliments her nighty. This alone brightens Huki's mood a little as she prepares to sleep. While she lies on her bed, she calls Ichika and apologizes to him for being a dickhead earlier in the day. The following day, word spreads in class that the interclass tournament is starting soon. One of Ichika's classmates speaks of a transfer student from China. After hearing about the girl, Cecil feels confident that she can take on the transfer student in battle without any issues. The transfer student in question is none other than Fan Rin, who is in a different class. She steps into Ichika's class and reveals that she is the cadet representative from China. Cecil, on the other hand, wonders why Rin is acting all friendly toward Ichika. However, Chifuyu enters the classroom and spoils the fun by sending Rin over to her class. Later that day, Day. During lunch break, Ichika gets food at the cafeteria with Rin, Cecil, and Huki. Since Ichika is spending most of his time talking to Rin, Huki does not bother to join him at his table. While eating, Rin questions Ichika about how he was able to activate an IS in the past. As Ichika explains himself, he recalls what happened to him back then. At that time, Ichika entered a testing facility for an entrance exam. There, he lost his way and ended up in a room where an IS unit was kept. He touched the unit out of sheer curiosity, and it activated surprisingly. Other officials stormed into the room shocked that an IS responded to Ichika's command. In the present, Ichika explains what happened in the past and relates it to how he got into the academy. At some point, Huki and Cecil get fed up with Rin having Ichika all to herself. Both girls ask Huki to explain his relationship with Rin, and he does accordingly. Ichika states that Rin is just his childhood friend, and after Huki hears this, he lowers her guard a little. She becomes more excited when Ichika introduces her as his first childhood friend. While everything plays out, Cecil feels left out, because she is not related to Ichika in any way. She tries to gain everyone's attention by speaking about herself but Rin ignores her. It gets to a point where Huki and Rin argue about who spent the most time with Ichika when they were kids. Finally, the argument ends as a bell for a training session goes off. At sunset, Ichika enters into a training session with Huki and Cecil. Here, 
Cecil teams up with Hoki to beat the shit out of Ichika. However, it does not end well because Ichika lies weak on the ground, struggling to breathe at the end of the training session. Cecil is the first to leave the training arena, while Hoki follows after her leaving Ichika behind to catch his breath. Ichika makes it into the school's main building, but he worries over the fact that he could not take on Hoki and Cecil. While swimming in his thoughts, Rin meets up with him again and offers him a warm towel. She wastes no time to initiate a personal conversation with Ichika since she is alone. She asks Ichika to know if he has been lonely without her, but she does not get the answer she wants. Moreover, she changes her attitude when she learns that Ichika and Huki are roommates. After the conversation with Ichika, Rin packs her bags to Huki's room, trying to persuade Huki to swap rooms with her. She tries to pull a fast one on Huki by playing the childhood trick, but Huki sees through her and declines the offer. At some point, Rin speaks to Ichika about a promise they made in high school. She deliberately ignores Huki who is telling her to leave the dorm room. As Huki gets enough of Rin, she takes up a wooden sword and tries to use it on her. Rin partially deploys her IS and uses it to block Huki's attack. Shocked, Huki powers down and lets Rin continue the conversation with Ichika. During the conversation, Ichika recalls the promise he made to Rin, but he misses the whole point of it. When he voices out, Rin smacks him in the face and leaves the dorm room angrily. In her absence, Huki stares at Ichika wishing that the bastard died from a horse kick. On the day of the interclass tournament, Ichika is staged to face Rin in a duel. Before he flies out into the battle arena, he studies Rin's IS to know what strategy he will use against her. Cecil says some words of encouragement to Ichika, while Huki tells him to stick to what he learned during their training session. Moments later, Ichika flies out of the anger to the battle arena so that he can face his opponent, Rin. While in midair, Rin boasts and tells Ichika that she will go easy on him if only he apologizes. Ichika, on the other hand, cares a lot about his ego, so he chooses not to accept Rin's offer. He intends to fight against Rin without holding back. The duel begins as both contestants prepare speed attacks for themselves. Rin dodges the first attack and tries to land a fast one on Ichika, but she misses her target. This alone makes Rin compliment Ichika for doing well, as their battle continues, Cecil, who watches from behind a screen, wishes that Ichika pulls off a specific move he learned during his training session. Meanwhile, Chifuyu remains silent and stares at the screen. Back outside, Ichika finds himself set on the defensive and he thinks deeply about how he will attack Rin. It goes on to a point where Rin summons a nasty blast at him, but he dodges. Sadly, the attack was just a trap to get Ichika to a particular position in midair. Before he can realize himself, he falls victim to a nasty blast from Rin's cannon. Fortunately, the energy barrier on Ichika's suit protects his body from taking any damage. As he struggles to stand up, Rin wastes no time to shoot invisible projectiles at him. Despite being weak, Ichika dodges the projectiles and manages to regain himself completely. Meanwhile, Huki and the others watching behind a screen fear that Ichika might not have a chance against Rin's suit. Back outside, Ichika recalls a time in the past when he was training for the tournament. Back then, he wondered why he only had a sword as a weapon, but Shifuyu told him that the weapon was enough for her to fight in her time. In the present, Ichika recalls that moment and then tells Rin that he will go all out on her. This time, Ichika means business, and he intends to use a unique skill Chifuyu taught him to finish the battle. According to Chifuyu, the said skill allows one to accelerate to top speed in a flash to approach the enemy. However, it can only be used once in a duel. Moving on, Ichika picks up speed to the extent that Rin loses track of his movements. Just before Ichika can land the finishing strike, a beam blast shatters the energy barrier protecting the arena and disrupts the duel. Immediately, Maya alerts Chifuyu by saying that an external entity penetrated the arena's energy field. After hearing this, Rice gives an order for the match to be suspended so that the other students can evacuate the area. Within seconds, the fighting arena is placed on lockdown, and Ichika finds out that the match has been suspended. While the smoke at the arena clears out, Rin notices that an unidentified IS is locked onto her. Despite that, she intends to engage the enemy alone, but Ichika does not like the idea. An argument begins between the two as Ichika tries to convince Rin not to fight alone. Ichika quickly moved to block the beam aimed at Rin, making sure she didn't get hurt. He carries her using his IS unit and flies her away from harm. While in midair, Ichika looks down and sees the enemy below him. Based on what he sees, he wonders if the enemy is wielding an IS, or not. While Ichika tries to make sense of his situation, Maya sends a transmission to him telling him to evacuate the area. Stubborn Ichika refuses her order claiming that he wants to hold the enemy off until all the students are safe. 
Soon the transmission ends and Ichika lets go of Rin. Both contestants form a united front to fight against the enemy. Despite being outnumbered, the enemy manages to set Rin and Ichika on the defensive in the first few minutes of their battle. At some point, Rin leads an attack against the enemy, and Ichika follows behind her. Maya, on the other hand, panics when she sees Rin and Ichika flying into a cloud, but Chifuyu tells her to stay calm. Cecil, who is currently with Maya, begs Chifuyu to allow her to assist Ichika and Rin in battle. In turn, Rise replies by showing her that all doors in the facility are locked. Now Ichika and Rin are on their own, and they need to hold out until reinforcements reach the facility. Back at the battle arena, Ichika tries to take advantage of an opening to land a fatal attack on the enemy. As he attempts the attack, his target picks up speed and causes him to miss. Now Ichika's energy levels are low because of the amount of speed attacks he tried to land on the enemy. He has only one shot left at defeating the enemy, and he wishes to take it. In the meantime, Rin evades multiple shots that the enemy fires at her. While at it, she wonders what she will do to up her chances of defeating the enemy. At some point, Ichika flies close to her position, and tells her about the possibility of the enemy being an unmanned IS unit. He wonders if someone is piloting the IS unit, but Rin emphasizes that an IS unit can only be controlled by a human. Even at that, Ichika smiles at the possibility of the enemy being an unmanned IS unit, because he will be free to go all out on it without any casualties. When he voices out, Rin likes his idea and looks forward to acting according to his plan. Soon, Huki arrives at the scene and calls Ichika's attention. Here, she dares Ichika to win the enemy, but the enemy powers up again and prepares to fire his cannon. This time, Ichika is ready for the enemy, and as such, he tells Rin to shoot a beam blast at him. At first, Rin gets second thoughts, but she does as instructed since she is running out of options. As Ichika feels the impact of Rin's blast, the energy levels of his suit increase and he powers up even more. Despite receiving all that juice, the flop fails to land the finishing strike on his target. As a result, he gets countered and punched to the ground. As he struggles to regain himself, the enemy draws closer to him. Before hell can break loose, Cecil arrives fully equipped with her IS and shoots a fatal blast at the enemy. As the enemy falls weak to the ground, Ichika tells Cecil he knew she would come. Cecil, on the other hand, tries hard not to let her feminine side take over. Suddenly, the enemy recovers and attempts a nasty attack on Ichika. This time, Ichika doves directly at the enemy to defeat it. At sunset, Ichika regains consciousness and finds himself lying on a bed in the infirmary. Sitting beside him is Rin, who feels concerned about his health. When asked about the enemy IS, Rin replies by saying that it stopped working. After hearing this, Ichika smiles and reminds Rin of their promise in high school. It goes on to a point where Ichika asks Rin about her parents. My parents divorced, Rin replies to Ichika while staring out the window. After hearing this, Ichika stays silent for a while and then asks Rin to hang out with him in the future. Rin likes the idea, but before she can rejoice, Cecil enters the room to see Ichika. Cecil upon seeing Rin looks pissed because they both agreed to enter the room at the same time. Huki enters the room seconds later and becomes pissed at Cecil and Rin because they all agreed to check up on Ichika at the same time. Meanwhile, Chifuyu and Maya are somewhere in the academy's main building, analyzing the enemy IS. Based on Maya's findings, the enemy IS is unmanned, and when she voices out, Chifuyu stares in silence, wondering what is going on. The following day, Ichika plays a video game with his childhood friend named Dan. While they are at it, Dan's sister Ran steps in to remind her brother that food is ready. Upon seeing Ichika in the room, she becomes uncomfortable because of the way she is dressed. Finally, Dan warns her to knock when she wants to enter his room. As time goes on, Ichika and Dan enjoy a meal in Ran's restaurant. As Ichika eats, Shai Ran casually tells Ichika to enjoy his meal. For some reason, she seems uncomfortable when around him, but Ichika is just too dumb to notice. Later that evening, after Ichika arrives at his dorm room, Maya steps in and informs Huki that she will have to move out of the room. Huki expresses shock at the matter and asks Maya if she has to move out immediately. Maya replies by emphasizing that two teenagers of the opposite sex cannot be sharing rooms. Ichika does not seem bothered by the turn of events, and his comments infuriate Huki to the extent that she decides to move out immediately. Even at that, Ichika is just too brainless to know why Huki is pissed. As time goes on, Huki arrives at the idiot's dorm room to say a few words. When given a chance to speak, Huki tells Ichika that she wants to date him if she comes out successful in the all-class individual tournament coming up in the next month. Little does she know that three students are eavesdropping on her conversation with Ichika. The following day, it did not take long for a rumor about Huki's proposal to spread among the female students. Cecil, who is in class at the time, struggles to understand what is going on, and Huki plays along too. Soon Chifuyu arrives and calls the classroom to order. After everyone assumes their seats, Maya catches everyone's attention by introducing a new
new transfer student to the class. The transfer student is none other than Charles Dunois, a male student from France. Although he seems feminine, all the girls in the class cheer loudly because they have another male student. At some point, Chifuyu gets tired of the noise and silences the class. She informs her students that they have to observe a training session with another class. Before she concludes her announcement, she assigns Ichika to Charles, since he is a boy. Immediately, Ichika holds Charles by the hand and leads the way out of class. On the way to the boys' locker room, some girls rally up against them just to see the new male transfer student. However, Ichika and Charles pass through another alley to get to their destination. When they reach the boys' locker room, Ichika formally introduces himself to Charles and then reminds him to prepare for training. For some reason, Charles looks the other way while Ichika puts on his gear. It does not take long for Charles to put on his training suit despite it being tight. One look in between Charles's legs makes Ichika wonder how he is comfortable down there. Along the line, a conversation begins between both students as Ichika asks questions about Dunois. It turns out that Dunois is the largest French company in the IS business, and Charles's father is the president. When Ichika hears this, he figures out why Charles acts the way he does, assuming that Charles comes from a rich family. Later that afternoon, during a training session between Rin and Ichika's class, Chifuyu orders Rin and Cecil to step up. At first, Cecil and Rin hesitate to do as instructed, but after they get reminded of Charles's presence, Cecil begins to do her thing. Since Rin and Cecil are not with the group, they end up wondering who they will have to spar against. As Chifuyu tries to call out their sparring opponent, Maya crashes into the training arena and Ichika ends up on her. Jealousy reeks in Cecil's mind to the extent that she fires a warning shot at Ichika. Nevertheless, Maya recovers quickly and stops both girls from doing something they will regret. Eventually, Chifuyu pits Rin and Cecil against Maya and tells both students to fight. At first, Cecil feels that Maya will not stand a chance in their match, but Chifuyu bluntly assures her that she will lose in no time. At the the start of the match, Rin, Maya, and Cecil fly off into the atmosphere. An aerial combat begins as Cecil shoots Maya with concentrated plasmic emissions, but she fails to hit her target. Maya moves quickly with her unit to the extent that she dodges a surprise attack from Rin. While she fights, Chifuyu tells Charles to give a full description of Maya's IS unit. Charles replies accordingly by saying that the unit is the last of the second generation models, but its specs match those of the third generation suits. According to her, the suit is good in any type of combat style provided that it is equipped with the right weapons. In the meantime, Rin and Cecil get their arses handed to them as Maya bundles them up and makes them share a beam blast from her cannon. Finally, both girls fall weak to the ground and Maya emerges as the winner. After the smoke clears out, Chifuyu tells her students to address their instructor with respect because they are competent. The other students learn a lesson from Maya's victory as they break off into smaller teams to train. During the next training session, lots of girls surround Ichika and Charles respectively because they want to see how they will pilot their unit. Meanwhile, Huki is somewhere in the crowd looking pissed because Ichika is getting so much attention from girls. As time goes on, the students take turns moving an IS unit. When it reaches Hauki's turn, she reveals that she has issues with getting into the unit's cockpit. Maya, after hearing this, tells Ichika to help Huki get into the IS unit. At first, Huki expresses shock, but she calms down a bit when Ichika deploys his IS unit. Ichika wastes no time carrying shy Huki to Maya's unit. While at it, Huki summons the courage to ask Ichika out to lunch, and he agrees seamlessly. During the lunch break, Huki finds herself sitting with Cecil, Rin, and Charles, because Ichika was stupid enough to invite them over. Charles reads the tension around the ladies and wonders if it is okay for him to stay. He confides in Ichika who tells him to stay, giving an excuse that they are both guys and they are now roommates. Moving on, Rin and Cecil present lunch packages to Ichika, and as such, Huki feels reluctant to display hers. Ichika tries out Cecil's food and tries his best to hide his true opinion about the meal. While sweating, Ichika settles to have Huki's dish, and he pressurizes her to offer it to him. After tasting the food, he compliments Huki immediately by saying that it is delicious. His positive remarks make Huki happy, although she tries to deny putting lots of effort into preparing the dish. Jealousy consumes Rin and Cecil, but it gets worse when they are forced to watch Ichika feed Huki. Charles puts fuel into the already burning fire by addressing Huki and Ichika as a couple in Rin and Cecil's presence. This alone makes both validation-seeking struggle to feed Ichika their meal so they can be on the same level as Huki. That evening, Ichika and Charles retire to their dorm room, where they have a nice cup of tea. While they are at it, Charles questions Ichika about his IS training routine, and then opts to join Ichika during his intensive training sessions. Ichika agrees to the offer, and looks forward to training with Charles. The next day, Maya introduces a new transfer student. The transfer student is none other than Laura Bodewig from Germany. She introduces herself to the class in a rather short and direct way, but then takes note of Ichika's presence in the class. She takes a few steps to Ichika's position, and lands a resounding slap on his cheek, 
saying that she will never acknowledge him as Chifuyu's younger brother. The slap shocks Maya, Ichika, and the rest of the students in the class, and they wonder what's going on. Later that morning, during a training session with other students, Rin, Cecil, and Huki go hard on Ichika because he does not know some elementary IS unit operations, in the heat of the moment. Charles arrives and saves Ochika from being eaten raw by his respective female trainers, Charles intends to face Ichika in a training duel, and he flies to the other side of the fighting arena. Other students who are present at the time gather at a spot to see both boys fight. The duel begins as Ichika attempts a speed attack on Charles. Charles blocks immediately, and flies off into the atmosphere firing countless shots at Ichika using an automated machine gun. At some point, Ichika speeds up carelessly to take advantage of an opening but he fails into a positional trap set by Charles. Charles wastes no time firing sniper shots at Ichika, which gradually depletes his opponent's energy shield. Long story short, Ichika loses the duel, and he ends up receiving lessons from Charles about why he lost. Ichika listens attentively to Charles and understands what he is saying because of the way he explains things. This alone makes Rin, Cecil, and Huki feel jealous because they failed to make Ichika understand a concept earlier. As time goes on, Charles gives Ichika his long-range weapon so he can improve his firing accuracy. Since Ichika is too dumb to master his firing posture, Charles supports and guides him to shoot. The way he does this makes Rin feel more jealous. With Charles's assistance, Ichika is able to hit an accuracy score of well over 50% on his first trial. However, Laura's presence catches the attention of other students present at the training arena. She is currently in her unit and intends to have a duel with Ichika. When she clarifies her intentions, Ichika tells her he will not fight. In spite of that, Laura prepares a beam blast and fires it at Ichika, but Charles moves quickly to block the attack. Now, Charles is set on the offensive ready to fight Luara to protect Ichika. Before things can get worse, Chifuyu gives an order for the students to disperse and Laura powers down. In her absence, Rin, Cecil, and Huki question Ichika about his issues with Laura. Later that afternoon, Ichika sits in silence in the boys' locker room. Charles arrives shortly, and Ichika thanks him for protecting him from Laura earlier. Normally Charles is meant to change in the locker room, but he decides to head to his dorm room first. Confused, Ichika tries to make Charles stay back and shower in the boys' bathroom but refuses for some reason. As Charles sprints off to his dorm room, Ichika is stuck wondering what might be up with him. After Ichika is done with his business in the boys' locker room, he heads out of the building heading into a field. He recalls the time when Laura slapped him in class. However, he snaps back into reality when he overhears Laura's conversation with Chifuyu. It appears that Laura wants Chifuyu to leave the academy and return to Germany since she was an instructor there. She also feels that Ichika and the other students in the academy are not fit to be Chifuyu's students. After hearing this, Chifuyu reminds Laura of her place and instructs her to return to her dorm room. As Laura runs away from the scene, Chifuyu senses Ichika's presence and orders him to continue training so he does not lose his first game of the upcoming interclass league. After that, Chifuyu walks away but Ichika calls her attention again. This time, he asks to know if Laura's harsh behavior toward him earlier was because of something that happened in the past. Chifuyu interrupts Ichika before he can finish his question, stating that the past is in the past. Sometime in the past, during the second IS International Fighting Tournament, Ichika was kidnapped by someone on the day of the finals. Back then, he was tied up and imprisoned, and it caused Chifuyu to withdraw from the tournament to save him. From that moment, Chifuyu forfeited the final round of the tournament, and her decision caused a huge uproar. In the quest to return a favor to the German military, who informed her about Ichika's location, she stayed back and instructed the German military's IS division. Ichika thinks about his past and blames himself for Chifuyu's career path because he is just a helpless scumbag of a brother. Soon, Ichika arrives in his dorm room and finds out that Charles is in the bathroom. Long story short, he finds out that Charles is a girl. Ichika remains calm after he leaves the bathroom as he sits in silence on his bed. Charles finally gets out of the bathroom after spending two hours in there doing heaven knows what. The atmosphere in the room is quite tense, but at least Ichika is smart enough to offer Charles some tea to calm things down. Although he means well, the sloppy bastard makes the mistake of spilling hot tea on his hand. As he struggles to wash off with cold water, Charles assists him. In the end, the pain fades away, and both students sit to talk. During their conversation, Charles reveals that she pretended to be a guy because her family told her to do so. She also adds that she is not a real child of the Dunois family. According to her, the Dunois people took her away after her biological mother passed away. Back then, the Dunois people performed tests on her, and in the process, they learned that she had a high IS aptitude. As a result, she became a test pilot and was privileged to meet her supposed father only a couple of times. Since then, the Dunois company has gone through a crisis since they have been poor in researching third-generation IS models. In the present, 
Charles narrates that the Dunois company might lose their IS development rights if it continues to produce poor results. When asked about her role in Dunois company's motive, Charles states that she is meant to gather publicity. She also reveals that she is under orders to collect data on Ichika's IS unit and report back to her superiors. After Charles is done speaking, Ichika analyzes the situation and becomes pissed. Enraged, Ichika questions Charles if she is fine with her assignment. He mentions being abandoned by his parents and adds that parents shouldn't exploit their kids. He then questions Charles to know what she wants to do with her life. Charles reveals that she might end up in prison if she reveals herself as a girl in the academy. Despite hearing that, Ichika reads out a part of the academy's constitution and reminds Charles that a student belongs to no country or group while being a student. With this knowledge, Charles realizes that she can do as she pleases at least till she graduates. In the end, Charles smiles and thanks Ichika for agreeing to keep his secret. Soon Cecil knocks on the door and Ichika hurries to tuck Charles in bed. After she lets herself in, she sees Ichika patting Charles to sleep. When asked what is going on, Ichika lies by saying that Charles is sick. Charles plays along with the lie and allows Cecil to take Ichika out for dinner. On their way out, Puki bumps into the couple and becomes jealous. Her emotions take over as she grabs onto Ichika to prevent Cecil from having him all to herself. As time passes, Ichika returns to his dorm room, looking all tense and sweaty. When asked what happened, he ignores Charles's question and hands her some food. Upon seeing the food, Charles freaks out a bit since she has no experience eating with chopsticks. As a result, Ichika agrees to feed Charles personally. It all ends well for Charles because she likes the way Ichika treats her. Later that night, Laura sits alone on a platform staring into the atmosphere. Atmosphere. She takes off her eye patch at some point and swears to eliminate Ichika since she believes he is the one holding Chifuyu back. The next day, Cecil and Rin hear the rumor that the winner of the upcoming tournament will get to go out with Ichika. Puki feels uncomfortable when the girls hear this because she might have been the cause of the rumor. Ichika and Charles arrive shortly after. Later that morning, Puki stands by herself wondering why the rumor spread so fast. Despite that, she fixates her mind on the fact that she needs to win the tournament. While doing so, she recalls a time in the past when she was in fourth grade. Back then, one day, she was on her way to winning the national kendo competition, but she lost by default since she couldn't attend because of her sister's IS presentation. People became concerned with the IS technology because of its potential use as a weapon. As a result, Puki's family was constantly on the move for their own safety. As time went on, Puki was finally split from her parents, and her elder sister went missing. Despite that, she continued to practice kendo because she believed that to be her sole connection to her childhood friend, Ichika. One day, while she was sparring against an opponent, she lost her temper and went berserk on him. Even to date, she regrets her actions as a person and admits that she was just being violent. Now, she reflects on the past and wonders if she can still win the tournament, knowing that her temper is not in check. As time passes, Rin and Cecil head separately to the training arena. Here, both c agree to have a go at themselves to know who is stronger. As expected, Cecil perceives herself as the stronger one, and the way she does this pisses Rin off. Rin wastes no time in deploying her IS unit to engage Cecil in a heated combat. However, things quickly get interesting as Laura arrives at the scene and obstructs their match. Her presence scares Cecil a little, as much as she tries to hide it. Moving on, Laura dares Cecil and Rin to fight against her at once. Perplexed, Cecil and Rin take Laura up on the offer, and they prepare to fight. Before the one-sided battle begins, Laura trash-talks Rin and Cecil's suit to the extent that they get enraged. In anger, Cecil and Rin charge carelessly at Laura, hoping to inflict pain and suffering on their target. In the meantime, Ichika and Charles are currently in the hallway leading out of the school's main building. While on the way, they find out that Laura, Cecil, and Rin are fighting in the training arena. Puki joins them too, and watches as Cecil and Rin get their arses handed to them. Rin summons the courage to land concentrated beam attacks on Laura. Laura deploys an energy barrier that blocks Rin's beam blasts, leaving Rin and the others utterly shocked. Puki remains composed as she watches the battle because she knows what Laura used to block Rin's attacks. Charles throws more light on the technique as he speaks of AIC, which is common among third-generation IS units. After hearing all these, Ichika pays more attention to the fight, hoping for the worst not to happen. Back in the battle, Rin gets restrained by Laura despite her best efforts to flee. Cecil, on the other hand, tries to land a surprise attack on Laura, but she falls victim to a trap. Shocked, she takes the full impact of Laura's cannon blast and falls with Rin to the ground. After the smoke clears out, Rin and Cecil struggle to recover from the crash. Upon seeing Laura again, Rin activates her cannon to land a strike, but her target does not look unfazed. Rather, Laura shoots another cannon blast, but Cecil counters it. This time, as the smoke clears out, Rin and Cecil fly away from Laura's position to avoid any close-range attacks. Despite that, 
they fall victim to a rope-like projection from Laura's suit. Laura restrains them with the rope and pulls them mercilessly like guard dogs to her position. She beats the living shit out of Rin and Cecil to the extent that their energy barriers almost give up. While it all happens, Ichika slams his hand on the barrier around the arena to make Laura stop. She gives off an evil smile, and this makes Ichika break through the barrier using his unit. On first contact with Laura, Ichika does not stand a chance. He falls victim to an intense energy field set by Laura that slows his movement. Before things get worse, Charles enters the battle arena and fires countless shots at Laura. Ichika seizes an opportunity to rescue Rin and Cecil while Laura is distracted by Charles. Laura gets a hold of herself and aims her cannon at Ichika. Ichika notices this and focuses all he has on his thrusters to accelerate instantly out of Laura's scope. He succeeds in fleeing from Laura and ends up dropping Rin and Cecil off in a safe position. Before he flies off, Cecil recovers and admits that she is ashamed. Meanwhile, Charles is currently being pulled by Laura's ropes. Before Ichika can react, Laura takes out a glowing weapon to finish Charles off for good. Before hell can break loose, Chifuyu appears at the scene and uses only a sword to block Laura's weapon. Shocked, Laura powers down because she is scared of Chifuyu, the drill master. Chifuyu immediately catches the attention of all students at the arena and disbands all sparring matches until the day of the tournament. She looks pissed because Rin and the like fought till the arena's energy barrier got destroyed. Later that day, Ichika and Charles visit Cecil and Rin at the infirmary. Here, Charles gets curious and questions both victims about why they got into a fight with Laura. Upon hearing the question, Rin and Cecil choke on their drinks because they know they were previously not fighting for a good reason. Their reason for fighting screams Ichika, but Cecil covers it up by saying that Laura insulted her pride as a woman. Despite that, Charles sees through the girls and realizes that they are into Ichika. As she tries to speak on the matter, the girls grab her firmly to shut her mouth. Meanwhile, one idiot stands on the other side of the room with no idea of what is going on. He separates the girls from Charles, but ends up touching them on their injuries. Before he can apologize, a bunch of students enter the room, bearing news about the upcoming tournament. It turns out that participants are required to participate in pairs in order to contest in the tournament. After getting this info, Ichika settles to partner with Charles, and the girls are left disappointed. Despite that, Rin and Cecil struggle to partner with Ichika for the tournament, but Maya enters the room and drops bad news. According to her, Cecil and Rin are in no condition to fight because of the damage their respective IS units took in their previous battle. Now, Cecil and Rin are fixated on preventing Huki from winning the tournament because they do not want her to date Ichika. Later that evening, Charles and Ichika take a walk out of the infirmary. On the way to their dorm rooms, Charles thanks Ichika for picking her to be his partner. She is happy that someone like Ichika is looking out for her. Soon, they arrive at their dorm room where Ichika tells Charles that she does not have to speak like a boy when they are together. Charles replies saying that she was trained to speak like a boy so she would not fall out of line by chance. However, she agrees to speak like a girl whenever she is alone with Ichika. A week later, all students gather at the battle arena for the first match of the tournament. Ichika and Charles are currently in the boys' locker room changing into their battle suits. While at it, a screen displays Ichika and Charles' first opponents. Upon seeing the screen, both students express shock because they are up against Huki and Laura. As time passes, Charles and Ichika present themselves at the battle arena directly facing their opponents. For some reason, Ichika looks happy to be up against Huki and Laura. He wastes no time in chasing after Laura after the officials give the signal for the tournament to begin. On first contact with Laura, Ichika falls under an intense energy field that restricts his movements. The bastard looks too confident for someone who is bound to lose against Laura. He looks Laura dead in the eye as she deploys her cannon at him. Before Laura can fire a shot, Charles arrives and fires a beam blast at her. As expected, Laura dodges the attack but flies off on the defensive. Meanwhile, Huki shows off an attitude as she reminds Charles and her mate that she is also a threat. Charles and Ichika form a united front to attack Huki at once, while Charles stands back to land the second strike. Before Charles' shot can reach Huki, Laura arrives and uses her ropes to push Huki out of the way. She fights like Huki is in her way and does not give a damn about what happens to her. Ichika goes head to head with Laura and manages to keep his cool against her. Huki recovers within minutes, but Charles prevents her from landing a sneak attack on Ichika. As she struggles to find a way around, Charles fires a shot at her that leaves her suit temporarily without a jewel of energy. Following that, Ichika supercharges his suit and goes berserk on Laura. He falls victim to Laura's energy field again, but this time, Charles intervenes. The coordination between Ichika and Charles sets Laura on the defensive for the second time. Sadly, Ichika's suit's energy runs out as he tries to land his signature move on Laura. He ends up falling to the ground, but Charles picks up after him. Charles engages Luara in a close-range battle, firing countless armor-piercing rounds at her. As Laura struggles to block, Ichika recovers and takes a shot at her. Enraged, Laura attempts a nasty attack on Ichika, 
but she leaves herself open to an energy-depleting attack from Charles. A smile comes off Ichika's face because he is now sure that Laura is done for good. Meanwhile, Charles wastes no second in inflicting immense pain on Laura. A couple of power punches here and there leave Laura drifting toward insanity. I cannot afford to lose, Laura tells herself as humanity slips away from her. Sometime in the past, when she was just a little girl in Germany, she was used for an experiment to boost her performance in the military. Back then, when IS was invented, a nanochip was implanted into her eye to enhance compatibility with an IS unit. However, her body did not adapt fully to the procedure and as such, she was labeled a failure. Luckily, she met Chifuyu who helped to improve her skills. One day, curiosity consumed Laura to the extent that she questioned Chifuyu about how she was so strong. I have a little brother, Chifuyu replied Laura. When Laura heard this, rage grew in her heart because she felt that Ichika was making Chifuyu go soft. In the present, she allows that rage to consume her in the quest to attain more power. She activates the nanotech in her eye and ends up becoming a huge monster. While she morphs, Chifuyu gives a signal for an emergency. She suspends all tournament matches and places the arena on lockdown. Moving on, Laura completes her transformation, leaving Ichika terrified. Just two strikes from Laura leave Ichika without his suit. As Ichika bleeds out, he dreads the fact that Laura used Chifuyu's sword technique against him. Anger consumes him to the extent that he considers going after Laura on his own and without a suit. However, Huki catches up to him and slaps him back to sanity. After Ichika regains himself, he recalls a time in the past when Chifuyu was teaching him how to wield a sword. Back then, Ichika learned the hard way not to be consumed by his weapon. In the present, various experts mount the arena in their IS suits ready to defeat Laura. Meanwhile, Ichika is still fixated on defeating Laura himself. Charles supplies Ichika's IS unit with all the energy in hers. After the procedure is complete, Ichika activates part of his IS unit and forms it into a longsword. Before the stubborn jerk goes off to kill himself, Huki begs him not to die. Following that, Ichika walks off and channels a great amount of jewels into his sword. This alone causes his weapon to change form into a more lethal version. Another battle begins as Laura proceeds to attack. However, a single precise swing from Ichika's sword ends the battle immediately. The battle's outcome leaves Chifuyu, Maya, and others watching utterly shocked. Ichika manages to save Laura from herself by having a metaphysical conversation with her. It all ends when Ichika promises Laura that he will protect her as his own. Laura thinks about Ichika's promise again, but regains consciousness and finds herself lying in a hospital bed. Sitting beside her is Chifuyu, who provides a brief status report. A conversation about identity becomes as Laura struggles to define who she is. You can't become me. Chifuyu tells Laura before leaving the infirmary. Later that evening, Ichika and Charles enjoy dinner together at the academy's cafeteria. While they are at it, a couple of students stare in sadness because they feel that a victory against Ichika and Charles is impossible. Huki arrives at the scene shortly, and her presence draws Ichika's attention. Ichika walks up to her and tells her that he will go out with her. This alone excites Huki because she has always wanted to date Ichika. However, her happiness is short-lived when Ichika attaches shopping to the end of going out. The dumb bastard gets punched in the face after giving Huki Huki high hopes for a relationship. The following day, something strange happens in class. Maya introduces Charles as a transfer student with her feminine name and accurate gender. This alone shocks all the students in the class, but Huki is left more affected by the news. Things get worse as Rin breaks out of her classroom, just to get a piece of Ichika for lying about Charles the whole time. Before Ichika can get barbecued, Laura arrives and deploys a barrier to negate a shot. She then expresses her feelings to Ichika in the usual way leaving Charles, Maya, and other girls interested in Ichika utterly stunned. After the lip-fondling session ends, Laura publicly asks Ichika to be her spouse. Meanwhile, the morally drenched fool looks lost after Laura makes her intentions clear. That night, Shinonono Tabane gets a call from her younger sister, Huki. The way she answers makes Huki want to hang up but she keeps her on by mentioning a specially made IS unit for her. The next morning, Ichika wakes up to find Laura lying next to him. Shocked, he tries to get away from Laura's advances but fails. Unfortunately, Huki walks in and misunderstands the situation between Ichika and Laura. Huki ends up hitting Ichika with a wooden stick. After the whole whipping session, Ichika heads to town with Charles. While on a train, Ichika sits in pain regretting why Laura joined him in bed previously. He snaps out of his thoughts at some point and reminds Charles of the upcoming beach class. After the couple gets off the train, Charles forces Ichika to hold her hands while they walk in town. Ichika agrees instantly and leads the way to a mall. Little does he know that Cecil and Rin are keeping close tabs on him. On the other hand, Rin finds it hard to believe that Charles is holding hands with Ichika. She goes as far as asking Cecil if what she is seeing is true to make sure that her eyes are not deceiving her. After Rin realizes that she is not hallucinating, 
she makes up her mind to kill Charles. However, Laura arrives at the scene and kills the mood. From the looks of things, she is on the same page with Cecil and Rin since she also wants Ichika for herself. As time passes, she joins the girls to keep close tabs on Ichika and Charles. Ichika, on the other hand, makes a stop in front of a mall. Here, he comes up with a pet name for Charles since her original name is long to pronounce. Charles likes the idea of getting a pet name because it makes her feel special to Ichika. Moving on, Ichika breaks off with Charles to buy some items from a store. While he is away, Dan and Ran walk out of a store holding some items in their hands. It appears that Ran is shopping because of the beach class happening in the academy very soon. While she explains her plans to Dan, Ichika pops up from nowhere, but she becomes girly again when she finds out that Ichika is shopping too. A conversation begins between the group as Ran reveals that she will attend the IS Academy very soon. She intends to join Ichika in the school and looks forward to a good relationship with him. Ichika likes the idea, but he leaves the scene as soon as Charles arrives. Charles leads the way to a bikini shop. Out of curiosity, Ichika questions Charles about what is going on, and she replies by saying that she wants to show him her bikini. She also adds that Cecil, Rin, and Laura are outside looking for them. Laura is currently in the store taking notes of the different bikinis on display. A conversation between random strangers makes her realize that she needs to up her game if she really wants to entice Ichika. After Charles is done changing, Ichika compliments her bikini, and as such, she decides to buy it. Chifuyu passes by the changing room with Maya and hears Ichika's dumb voice. Out of sheer curiosity, she opens the curtain to confirm if she heard her brother's voice or not. As expected, she sees the idiot shivering with Charles. Maya ends up giving Ichika and Charles a lecture about morals and other related stuff. From a distance, Cecil and Rin observe the situation. While Laura gets on a call with her colleague, Clarissa, she explains her concerns about Ichika to Clarissa, seeking advice on how to attract him. Clarissa, who shares Laura's mindset, becomes upset when she learns Laura only has one swimsuit. She resolves to create the ultimate swimsuit to enhance Laura's allure during the beach class. She then suggests a secretive solution to resolve Laura's issue, ending with a sinister smile. After a few days, a bunch of students gather at a beach dressed in their bikinis ready for the beach thingy. It's quite sunny, and as such, most students take pleasure in playing in the water. The following evening, the students gather in a traditional Japanese building to enjoy a meal. Here, Cecil sits beside Ichika, and she experiences difficulties in maintaining a good eating posture. At first, Ichika asks if she is okay, and she lies by saying yes. However, Ichika sees through her deceit when he notices her weird leg movement. Despite that, he offers to feed Cecil, and she cheerfully agrees. Pervy Cecil wastes no time to surrender her chopsticks to Ichika so she can get fed. As Ichika feeds Cecil, other female students in the building become jealous of Cecil. The most affected by this is Huki, who also fears that Ichika might forget something important about tomorrow, 7th of July. Ichika's dining session with Cecil causes the ladies to raise their voices to the extent that Chifuyu intervenes. When Chifuyu gets out of her room, she tells the students to keep their voices down and also warns her stupid brother to behave himself. In her absence, Ichika whispers, come to my room later, to Cecil. The foolish imbecile intends to make up for the lost time with Cecil by having a private session with her. Meanwhile, Cecil is currently having all the weird perverted ideas a 15-year-old teenager would have at that time of the month. After the dining session ends, Cecil prepares to go see Ichika. While she is at it, some students notice that she is up to no good. As time passes, Cecil makes it out of the room in one piece, heading to Ichika's room. When she arrives in front of Chifuyu's room, she finds Charles, Rin, and the other lovebirds eavesdropping on Chifuyu's conversation with Ichika. Out of curiosity, Cecil joins the girls to listen, and what she hears makes her get the wrong impression. Words like, hold it in, mm-hmm, yeah, nice, fill Cecil's ears, and as a result, she becomes utterly shocked. In the quest to listen more, the girls push the door down, exposing all of them at once. It turns out that Ichika was only massaging Chifuyu, which is why she was moaning initially. Now, the girls kneel in front of Chifuyu trying to make up for their deeds. Chifuyu compliments Ichika's massaging skills and then allows the girls to have a feel of Ichika's magic fingers. The first in the queue is Cecil, and she becomes excited as Ichika prepares to massage her. Within minutes of pleasurable massaging, Cecil moans, saying that she is sleepy already. What happened next? is just something I cannot say. Moving on, Chifuyu sits before the ladies and asks them what they like about her brother. She is well aware that the girls are into him as much as Charles, and the others try to hide it. However, Charles and the others misjudge Chifuyu's tone, thinking that she will allow at least one of them to have her brother easily. Their happiness is short-lived as Chifuyu tells them to steal Ichika if they want him. The following day, Ichika meets Huki at an alley, looking all sad and gloomy. He tries to initiate a conversation with her, but all he gets are cold shoulders. As Huki walks away from the scene, Ichika notices some items on the ground. After he picks them up, a projectile falls from the sky and Tabane reveals herself. Shocked, Ichika tries to answer Tabane's question concerning 
Pookie's whereabouts. Cecil, who is present at the time, wonders who Tabane is. When she finds out that Tabane is Huki's sister, her mouth is left wide open. Later that afternoon, Chifuyu assembles students who have personal IS units. Huki's presence at the scene shocks Rin because she does not have a personal unit. When she speaks up, Chifuyu tries to explain Huki's condition. However, in the quest to do so, Tabane arrives from nowhere and tries to hug Chifuyu. Chifuyu tries her best to resist the playful pervert, and she wins in the end. Huki falls victim to her sister's playful character. After Tabane recovers, she introduces herself to Ichika and the others. Shocked, Rin and the others watch as another projectile lands close to their position from the sky. Tabani walks up to the projectile and proudly calls it Huki's personal IS unit. She explains that it's a fourth generation unit she specially designed herself and she claims it's better than all the new third generation units out there. While she explains the specs of the suit, Chifuyu stares at her in silence. As time passes, Huki hops on the suit and personalizes it with Tabani's help. After the personalization sequence is complete, she takes the suit out for a test flight. When Huki takes off from the ground, Charles expresses shock at the suit's magnificent acceleration. Is this the power of the fourth generation IS? she says to herself while staring in shock. Huki reaches peak speed within seconds of flight and she looks too composed while maintaining her speed. At some point, she deploys her katanas to test them out. A single swing of the weapon shoots a bunch of fast-moving beam blasts into the atmosphere. After that, Tabane deploys a missile launch system and fires countless missiles at Hoki to see how well she will perform against them. As expected, Huki wipes out the missiles in a single strike. The rest of the students are left shocked at Huki's new suit. Meanwhile, Chifuyu is the only one carrying a resting bitch face. Just then, Maya arrives at the scene bearing bad news from the military base. Chifuyu assesses the situation and orders Huki to end her test run. Moving on, Chifuyu explains the situation to Ichika and the others. In her words, two hours ago, off the Hawaiian coast, an American-Israeli joint developed a third-generation IS unit called Silveria Gospel, left its restriction area and went out of control. She also adds that the suit is unmanned, and those with personal IS units will have to handle the situation. Ichika, upon hearing this, expresses shock, but he calms down after Rin yells at him. Before the meeting proceeds further, Chifuyu makes them swear an oath that will prevent them from revealing information about the unmanned IS unit to other students. The strategic meeting begins as Laura and Cecil try to understand Gospel's specs, Chifuyu reminds them that Gospel is traveling at supersonic speed, so it can only be defeated by an IS that can stop it in a single strike. After hearing this, all the faces in the room turn to Ichika, because he is the man best for the job. At first, Ichika panics, but after some time, he thinks deeply and accepts his mission. However, Tabane enters the room and suggests that Huki join Ichika on the mission since her IS unit is the fastest. Later that morning, Chifuyu, Tabane, Ichika, and the others gather at a spot to begin a classified mission. Minutes before Huki takes off, Tabane brags about Huki's evolved IS unit. She even makes reference to a White Knight incident that happened about a decade ago. What she says makes Ichika recall the White Knight incident. About a decade ago, a month after Tabane announced the IS units, various countries' missiles were hacked and thousands of missiles were launched at Japan. Back then, one woman in a white IS unit appeared and destroyed every missile that was aimed at Japan. The IS unit was later named the White Knight, and its wielder disappeared after saving Japan. Back in the present, Tabane claims that she does not know who piloted the White Knight. As she tries to prove her point, Chifuyu smacks her in the head. In the end, she reverts to normal and adjusts some things on Huki's suit. At exactly 11.30 a.m., Ichika deploys his IS unit to prepare for his classified mission. Huki follows behind him as she deploys her IS unit too. After they both suit up, Chifuyu reminds them about the mission's objective. They are to destroy the target in one blow and come back successful. She then tells Huki to be careful in combat since she does not have battle experience. On the other hand, Rin and the others notice that Huki sounds more excited than usual. Chifuyu also shares the same mindset with them, and as such she opens a private line with Ichika to speak to him. While on the private line, Chifuyu tells Ichika to watch out for Huki since it is probable that she will mess up. After that, Chifuyu gets on an open channel and orders Huki to begin the mission. Huki wastes no time in tearing through the air at supersonic speed. Even Ichika, who is half as fast, wonders how Huki can accelerate so quickly while carrying his weight. While in flight, Huki establishes a link between her suit and a satellite so she can find Gospel easily. When she ascertains her target's location, she speeds up even more to reach it in time. Within seconds, Huki sights her target from a distance and then tells Ichika to hold on so she can speed up. While she speeds up, Ichika summons a huge amount of energy to his weapon so he can use it to finish Gospel in a single strike. As he attempts a kill strike, 
Gospel speeds up and evades the attack. Now Huki is forced to speed up even more so that Ichika can have a chase to slay the target. It goes on to the point that Gospel shoots multiple beam blasts at Huki and Ichika. Shocked, Ichika breaks up with Huki and tells her to attack their target from opposite sides. His plan is quite smart, as Huki executes it perfectly, but he flies off to defend a cargo ship from getting hit by stray beam blasts. Pissed, Huki yells at Ichika because he had a clear chance at Gospel. Ichika explains that Innocence would have died if he took his chance against Gospel. This alone enrages Huki to the extent that she tells Ichika to care less about the ship. Ichika responds to her by saying that she should not act selfishly. He has reason to believe that Huki is looking down on others because she has gained a great deal of power. These words make Huki reflect on her actions till she starts crying. Sadly, she is out of energy and cannot keep fighting with Ichika. Ichika, who is also out of energy, thinks of what to do to up his chances against his target. Within seconds, he takes multiple shots from Gospel in the quest to protect Huki. In the heat of the explosion, Huki reaches out out to Ichika to prevent him from falling into the ocean. Hours after the incident, Charles, Cecil, and Rin try to check up on Chifuyu and see how she is doing. Chifuyu remains calm and declines to see them. Cecil, on the other hand, recalls that Chifuyu has not checked up on Ichika since he began treatment. Hours ago, after the failed mission, Huki watched sadly as Ichika was carried unconscious on a stretcher by medics. Cecil and the others were shocked by Ichika's condition, while Huki appeared visibly distressed. Since then, but Laura understands that Chifuyu is actually hurting inside. In the present, Laura clarifies that Chifuyu appears cold only because she's deeply focused on the mission. Meanwhile, Chifuyu's frustration is evident in secret, despite her attempts to maintain a facade of composure. At sunset, Huki sits beside Ichika, wishing that he wakes up. Ichika is currently in a coma, and it looks like the sleepy bastard will not wake up anytime soon. While Huki sits there, she recalls what happened after Ichika was taken from the ocean. Back then, Chifuyu ended the mission, but ordered her subjects to stay on standby. In the present, Huki weeps because she blames herself for Ichika's condition. While she weeps, she wonders how Huki can have such a big heart to forgive and rescue people he doesn't even know. She ends up regretting her actions and the power she gained from her personal IS unit. Maya arrives in the room shortly and tells her to have some rest. At first, Huki insists on staying with Ichika, but after receiving a direct order from Chifuyu, she gets up and leaves. She runs out of the room heading for the beach, but she loses energy and stops to catch her breath. There, she recalls a time in the past when she was in elementary school. Back then, her mates used to pick on her because she was not girly enough. One day, Ichika had enough of the bullying and stepped in to chase her bullies away. Ichika's actions shocked Huki a lot to the extent that she called him foolish. However, Ichika assured her that he was just looking out for her. He also complimented a ribbon on Huki's head, but the lady pretends not to like it. Huki recalls this moment in the present as she stares at the ocean. Just then, Rin arrives at the scene and reminds Huki that she is responsible for Huki's condition. Pissed, Rin drags Huki by the collar and tells her to quit looking depressed. She uses the grief in Huki's heart as a catalyst to instill a fighting spirit in Huki, so she does not lose hope. However, Huki gets slapped in the face when she says that she will not use her IS unit anymore. Stop acting like a spoiled child, Rin tells Huki, who is currently sniffing dust. These words motivate Huki to the extent that she gets up yelling that she will fight. After hearing this, Rin smiles, and the other girls join her at the scene. It turns out that it was all a plan to get Huki out of depression, and to fight too. A mini strategic meeting begins between the girls as Laura ascertains Gospel's precise location using satellite imaging. Within minutes, the girls all agree to go after Gospel, and finish the mission once at once despite Chifuyu's warnings. Later that night, Laura deploys her cannon and fires a barrier-piercing missile at Gospel. Upon impact with Gospel, Chifuyu and her force receive intel that the girls defiled her orders. Despite that, she stares at her screens and refuses to call the girls back. The missile from Laura's cannon negates Gospel's energy barrier to the extent that it depletes completely. After Gospel charges at Laura and her comrades, dodging numerous missiles on the way, how he moves causes Cecil to encounter difficulties in landing a single shot on him. Gospel evades to the extent that he falls into a positional trap set by Charles. Despite that, he speeds up quickly and dodges all shots from Charles's weapon. At some point, Gospel returns the favor to Charles and uses the opportunity to gain altitude. Meanwhile, in Ichika's subconscious mind, he sees a strange girl standing on water. Out of curiosity, Ichika hops off a tree and walks closer to the girl, trying to understand why she seems so familiar. About a few feet away from the girl, she mutters, it's calling me, and fades into thin air. In her absence, Ichika expresses shock and wonders what just happened. Back in reality, Rin and Seal manage to pin Gospel at a point on the ocean. She powers up to fire countless shots at the enemy, but Cecil fails to maintain her position. As a result, Gospel flies off, leaving Rin chasing after him. 
Back in Ichika's mind, the scenery changes to that of a sunset. Here, Ichika sees a figure asking him if he desires power. In the present, Huki goes head to head with Gospel and manages to land a nasty strike on him that sends him falling into the ocean. Within seconds, Gospel recovers and slides out of the ocean controlling a vast amount of water. While enclosed in an energy barrier, he assumes his second form which grants him access to more power. In the meantime, Ichika takes some time to answer the million dollar question asked of him previously. Finally, he affirms that he seeks power to protect his friends. Seconds after saying this, the scenery reverts to normal and he sees the strange girl from earlier again. The girl grabs hold of Ichika's hand and a bright light fades the scene. Back in reality, Gospel summons a great deal of energy and shoots Huki from the sky. Even Cecil and Charles are not spared from Gospel's wrath as they get beaten and thrown to the ground. Before Huki passes out completely, she wishes to see Ichika again. The next time she opens her eyes, she sees Ichika standing close to her, shocked. Uki wonders how Ichika healed so quickly, but the bastard assures her that everything is fine. Tears roll down Huki's eyes because Ichika is alive and well. Ichika hands her a handkerchief to wipe her tears, and he also wishes her a happy birthday. Huki expresses shock after hearing this because she was previously sure that Ichika had forgotten about her birthday. After that, Ichika flies off to settle things with gospel. In the heat of the moment, Chifuyu receives intel that Ichika is conscious. After hearing this, Maya mounts her computers to monitor Ichika's speed and energy output. Based on her observations, she notices that Ichika is using his suit's second form just like Gospel. This time, Ichika means business as he easily erects a barrier to stop all incoming missiles from Gospel. The way he defends himself surprises Huki, who joins the fight soon after, giving Ichika some time to recover. Laura and the other girls recover too and look happy to see that Ichika is conscious. Cecil looks pumped up for a counterattack against Gospel, and the other girls share the same mindset. Ichika leads the counterattack as he flies into the atmosphere heading for Gospel. Uki's desire to fight alongside him intensifies, and as such, her energy charges up to 200%. Maya and Shifuyu watch from behind a large screen as Ichika goes head to head with Gospel. Due to the intensity of his attacks, his energy depletes at a high rate till he runs out. The good thing is that Cecil, Laura, and the others are there to take over from him. While the ladies are up against Gospel, Uki arrives and charges Ichika's suit up with energy. Now Ichika is back in the game and ready to inflict lots of damage on Gospel. Huki charges ferociously at Gospel while Ichika follows behind to provide rear support. Huki goes head to head with the enemy but fails to keep up at some point. Here, Ichika steps in and assumes full offense. This time, he leads Gospel into to a positional trap set by Laura. The attacks manage to do a little damage to Gospel, but it's not enough to take him out. In anger, he returns the favor to Laura, but Cecil steps in to protect her. He then gets desperate and summons beam blasts in spirals to clear any threat at any radius from him. While explosions wreak the scene, Ichika accelerates instantly and spears Gospel to the other side of the ocean. Here, Ichika stabs Gospel with his weapon to finish him off for good. As Gospel goes offline, Rin, Lauren, and the others gather around Ichika. Later that morning, Ichika, Huki, and the others appear before Chifuyu and Maya, awaiting their punishments. Chifuyu intends to punish them by organizing special training, which is compulsory for them to attend. After saying this, Maya calls Chifuyu out on the fact that she is being a bit cold. With this in mind, Chifuyu commends the students on their battle performance and dismisses them. Later that evening, some students question Charles and the others about the details of their previous battle. Because the girls previously swore an oath, they now decline to reveal any information in that regard. Meanwhile, Cecil wonders where Huki and Ichika are since they are not at the dining table. Elsewhere, Tabane sits at the beach going through Ichika's IS unit data. She expresses shock over the fact that Ichika's IS unit was able to regenerate and heal its wielder. Chifuyu appears at the scene shortly and places Tabane under the suspicion that she developed the White Knight. She also suspects that Tabane created the whole gospel situation so that her sister, Huki, can make a debit with her personal IS unit. She also has reason to believe that Tabane was behind the White Knight event about 10 years ago, where Japan's missile systems were hacked. After Chifuyu voices her suspicions, Tabane cryptically asks, is this world fun? Before vanishing from the scene, leaving Chifuyu with more questions than answers. Afterward, Huki meets up with Ichika at another part of the beach. Here, both lovebirds converse about their battle injuries and other related topics. Huki blames herself for getting Ichika hurt and wishes for Ichika not to forgive her so easily. Ichika, who is shocked at the time, pokes her on the forehead as her punishment. Surprised, Huki wonders if Ichika is making fun of her, but she fails to understand that Ichika is seamlessly forgiving her. 
As time passes, the atmosphere becomes romantic as both lovebirds stare at their eyes. Before they can do the do, a variation of Cecil's weapon aims directly at Ichika's head. Sadly, Ichika looks above and sees Laura, and the others looking at him with growing rage. The dumb bastard ends up running for his life with Huki, because Cecil now wants him dead. It's summertime. Ichika wakes up one morning only to find Laura lying next to him. This time, Laura is putting on some clothes, unlike the last time when Huki previously sneaked up on them. At first, Ichika expresses shock upon seeing the German extremist, but he calms down when she asks him out to the end of summer festival. The fool is excited to attend the festival because of its pool setting and other cool stuff, but Laura only wants to go with him. When Ichika brings up the idea of inviting the other girls, Laura becomes pissed and slams a dagger into a wall. Even as she walks away from the room in anger, the bastard fails to ascertain why she is upset. Later that morning, Cecil arrives at the academy after a journey from England. It appears that she spent most of her vacation with her family in England and is happy to be back in school. Upon getting out of her ride, Ichika sees her and calls her attention. This alone causes Cecil to have a crazy fantasy about Ichika, since she has missed him a lot. However, she snaps back into reality when Ichika hands her an invitation to the upcoming festival. In the meantime, Charles and Laura enjoy breakfast at the cafeteria. Here, Laura expresses her frustration in dealing with Ichika. Her eating partner Charles is more fixated on going shopping. One look at Laura makes Charles decide that she needs to go shopping too. After finishing their meal, Charles and Emily met up to go shopping. While they were together, Charles heard about a special crepe sold at the seaside park. Rumor had it that whoever ate this crepe would fall in love with the person who gave it to them. At around 11.27 a.m., Rin lies frustrated in her bed because she has not had a chance with Ichika since the summer vacation started. While she nags about her situation, Ichika arrives at her door to see her. Startled, the love freak hops off her bed and rushes to get the door for Ichika. Well, let's just say that Ichika saw what he was not supposed to see and got punched in the face for it. Charles and Laura are currently at a store in town shopping for clothes. Other customers at the store admire the union between both ladies because they look good together. As time passes, Charles joins the store owner to select a casual outfit for Laura. Laura takes the clothes into the changing room but struggles to put them on. She feels that she is not attractive enough to the opposite sex, and it is one of her biggest insecurities. Charles notices that Laura is taking too long to change. At first, Charles assumes that Laura does not like like the clothes, but Laura tells her that she wants something a tad revealing. Charles after hearing this heads off to get Laura a cute dress. After Laura puts on the dress, the customers at the store compliment her looks to the extent that they take pictures of her with Charles. Elsewhere, Huki trains alone at the academy's dojo. She intends to gain control of her emotions and keep her temper in check. After she is done with her training, she heads off to the bathroom for a quick shower. Ichika arrives shortly, demanding her attention. Within minutes, Huki hastens her shower session and puts on some clothes so she can see Ichika. She gets an invitation to join the scumbag at the upcoming summer festival. Huki likes the idea of the festival and agrees to join Ichika without any second thoughts. Later that afternoon, Charles and Laura enter a restaurant to have lunch. Here, the manager asks them if they would like to work part-time. Next thing, Charles and Laura are all dressed in a butler and maid outfit ready to attend to customers. The ladies at the restaurant easily get charmed by Charles since she looks handsome in a butler's outfit. Just then, a bunch of criminals enter the restaurant, threatening to shoot anyone who does not follow their orders. It appears that they are running away from the police and intend to use the hostages as leverage to get what they want. The policemen outside are no match for them since they have no machine guns. One of the robbers makes the mistake of asking Laura to serve him a drink. Laura serves the robber glass cups filled with ice cubes. She hits the tray in midair and hits the cubes with just enough force to inflict pain and injuries on the robbers. After she is done taking out most of the robbers, one of them takes out a gun to end things swiftly. Unfortunately for him, Charles is somewhere with a temper, preparing a nasty punch for him. Laura apprehends another robber that was feeling smart. Along the line, one of the frustrated robbers reveals a bomb that will take his life and that of others in the building. Both Charles and Laura look unfazed by this as they fire shots at the bomb's trigger to shut it down. At sunset, both heroes head off to get the famous crepe everyone has been talking about. Sadly, the crepe they intended to get has been sold out, but they settle for two different flavors. While enjoying their snack, Laura licks off a spill on Charles's mouth. Shocked, Charles wonders what is going on, but Laura tells her not to be scared. That evening, both students play dress up in cat costumes. Charles is most excited about it, but Laura feels uncomfortable in her outfit since she feels that Ichika might not like it. Ichika arrives in the room shortly after, only to see two teenagers dressed like cats. One sweet compliment from him brightens Laura's mood to the extent that she likes the costume. It is at this point that the idiot invites Charles to join him at the upcoming festival. Laura is most hurt by this since she wants to go out with Ichika alone. Later that evening, a strange lady with the codename M breaks into a private part of the academy's building. While she is at it, a bunch of soldiers form a united front to take her out. 
Sadly for the security men, she is too overpowered for a bunch of speeding bullets to take her off guard. After she is done taking the men out, she faces a bunch of officers and IS units. Despite being outnumbered, she looms unfazed and intends to take them out one by one. When asked what she is after, she replies by saying that she wants to take an IS hidden in the building. She then deploys her personal IS unit and prepares to fight. The officers express shock upon seeing M's unit because they have heard rumors about it. The following day, Kuki steps out to meet Ichika at an agreed spot. When she reaches her destination, she finds out that Ichika invited Cecil and his other lovebirds too. Ichika arrives shortly but finds out that his ladies are pissed. As the girls walk away in anger, the stupid idiot struggles to figure out why they left. Ichika enjoys a playful session with Huki and some of the girls. All of the girls are left happy because they managed to secure gifts from the same game challenge. In the evening, Chifuyu and Maya assess the previous night's emergency. Chifuyu is most shocked by what she sees in the surveillance footage for some reason. Meanwhile, Ichika and his ladies perform a ritual to mark the end of their summer vacation. Watching from a distance is a strange girl named Sarashiki Tadanashi who observes everything with a weird smile. The following day, Rin and Ichika have a go at themselves during an intense training session. Maya and Chifuyu monitor their performance from behind a screen to see how well they are doing. Maya is most impressed by Ichika's performance, but Chifuyu believes that her foolish brother is just being ruthless. Back at the training arena, Ichika promises to take Rin out in a single shot. As he attempts his famous kill strike, he loses lots of energy and falls victim to an attack from Rin leaving him frustrated. Minutes after the sparring match, Ichika chills in the boys' locker room, mourning his defeat. While at it, Tatanashi arrives and teases Ichika a little bit before leaving. Before Ichika can catch a glimpse of what is going on, he recalls that he is late for class. When he makes it to class, Chifuyu punishes him by letting Charles go violent on him. Later that morning, all the students gather at an assembly hall awaiting the student council president to address them. Tadanashi is the student council president, and Ichika is completely shocked when he discovers this. Ichika's mouth is left wide open even as Tatanashi winks at him. Tatanashi addresses the students concerning the school's festival coming up soon. Each class is to decide what they will do for the festival. After Tatanashi's announcements, Ichika retires to his classroom to pick what his mates will do for the festival. All the options outlined on the board are quite absurd to him, and he struggles to make a pick. Most of the girls agree with what is on the board, but Laura suggests something else that the students agree with. She speaks about organizing a maid cafe. Charles settles for the idea because she wants Ichika to be the cafe's butler. Meanwhile, Ichika wishes that the cafe is the normal one he knows about. After the meeting with his classmates, he finds out that he is already late for his special training. On his way to the training arena, stops, and converses with him. Tadanashi is quite interested in becoming Ichika's new coach because she believes that he is still weak. When she voices out, Ichika becomes offended and he ends up challenging her to a duel. Tadanashi accepts the challenge under the condition that she will do whatever she wants to do with Ichika if she wins. Later that afternoon, Ichika and Tatanashi meet at a dojo to battle it out. Before their duel begins, Tatanashi tells Ichika that he wins if he can make her fall to the ground even once. After hearing this, Ichika smiles, thinking that it will be an easy win. The duel begins as Ichika charges ferociously at Tadanashi to throw her off balance. On first contact with Tadanashi, Ichika gets countered and thrown to the ground. It goes on for a couple of times till Ichika gets weak. After he struggles to get up, he goes berserk on Tatanashi in the hopes of ending their battle at once. Let's just say that it did not end well for Ichika because he pulled up a pervert type move. Elsewhere, Laura walks around the school looking for Ichika. On the way, she wonders if Ichika is avoiding her, but she snaps back to reality when she overhears two girls' conversation. The girls are quite serious about their looks so that they can have a chance with Ichika. Laura notices this and ends up looking at her reflection in the glass window to correct any visible errors on her hair. After she gets it right, Chifuyu arrives and makes fun of her. As much as she tries to hide her deed, she gets caught by Chifuyu. Also, Riz reveals that Ichika is by the nurse's office inside the health clinic building. Meanwhile, Ichika is currently daydreaming about Huki on a fine field. He wakes up moments later only to find himself lying on Tatanashi's lap. Shocked, he tries to release himself from Tatanashi, but he fails. It is at this point that Laura arrives in the room to find him. What she sees stimulates her emotions to the extent that she attacks Tatanashi out of jealousy. Tatanashi holds it down with Laura and holds a blade to her neck so she can back off. For the first time, Laura visibly acknowledges defeat in Ichika's presence. At sunset, Ichika and Tatanashi arrive at the training arena. Charles and Cecil, who are stretching there, look surprised to see them together. It is at this point that Ichika reveals that Tatanashi is his new coach and admits he lost a duel against her. Tatanashi takes over from Ichika and asks both girls to display a circular formation. The girls waste no time deploying their IS units to do as instructed. Cecil and Charles fly into midair and complete a series of revolutions around themselves. As they reach top speed, they begin to fire shots at themselves. 
While explaining the formation to Ichika, Tadanashi becomes clingy towards him, causing the girls above to notice and become distracted. As a result, they clash and fall weak to the ground. After the crash, Tadanashi tells Ichika to prepare to perform the formation. He is up against Cecil this time despite being inexperienced in the said formation. His training exercise begins and fails almost immediately because he cannot dodge shots at close range. After he falls to the ground, he recovers and insists on proceeding with the exercise. This time, he manages to keep his cool against Cecil, but he flops at some point. That evening, he smashes his head on his dorm room's door because of how weak he is. The bastard opens his door only to find Tatanashi in his room. The activities that occurred in the room are classified, and you can already guess what went down. The following day, Ichika resumes his training session with Tatanashi as he flies around a fixed point while maintaining a steady speed. Tatanashi is quite hard on him, despite being all pervy and clingy in private. Ichika gets the hang of the revolving process, but fails to maintain his acceleration around an orbit. As a result, he loses balance and crashes to the ground. Again, Tatanashi yells after the smoke clears out. The next thing we see is Ichika resting his head on a table at the cafeteria as if he wants to pass out. It is lunchtime and his love minions are gathered around him looking worried. He ends up falling asleep like a baby and the girls watch him with a smile on their faces. On the day of the Academy's festival, Ichika's class hosts a maid cafe as suggested by Laura in the past. Ichika is dressed as a butler while Charles and some other ladies are dressed as maids. Students line up to get into the class, and most of them are happy that Ichika is ushering them in. Amongst the students is Rin, who intends to have Ichika all to herself as always, and wants Ichika to lead the way to her table. Ichika compliments her looks and ushers her into the classroom like a gentleman. When Rin arrives at her table, she goes through the menu and settles for the last item on it. That last item reads, Treat Your Butler Set. After making her pick, Ichika exhales and heads off to get drinks and sweets. After serving Rin, he sits back at the table in silence, waiting to be served food. Meanwhile, Rin has no idea what is going on. She soon learns that she is meant to feed Ichika her meal, and begins to do so. On the other hand, Rin intends to be fed too, but Ichika gets saved by one of his colleagues. It turns out that the butler is not supposed to feed the customer according to the house rules. Rin begins feeding herself, and while she eats, Ichika thinks of her as cute. When he voices his opinion, Rin freaks out and chokes on her food. A moment of panic makes Ichika take a nasty slap to the face. Even as Rin walks away from the table, Ichika is too dumb to figure out what is wrong with her. A lady posing as Makigami Reiko arrives at the scene shortly and seeks Ichika's attention. During the conversation between both parties, Reiko requests to try out some of her company's equipment on Ichika's IS unit. At first, Ichika looks confused, but Reiko tries to convince him to accept her offer. One of Ichika's classmates watching from a distance arrives at the scene and takes Ichika away under the guise that he needs to attend to other customers. Along the line, Cecil clings to Ichika because he is going on a break. As a result, Huki and the other lovebirds suspend what they are doing so they can struggle over the poor boy. They end up settling things over a game of rock, paper, and scissors, and Cecil comes out as the winner. He finishes blowing a wind instrument and hands it over to Cecil to try playing it. At first, Cecil stares at the instrument and fantasizes about an indirect kiss with Ichika, but her wishes are denied when the mouthpiece of the instrument is changed. As time passes, Ichika ends his break with Cecil and heads off to resume work. On the way, Tatanashi intercepts him and requests that he participate in an action-packed interactive play. Next, Ichika finds himself on a stage dressed in royal attire and a crown. Confused, he wonders what he is supposed to do since he was not given a script of any sort. After the lights come back on, Rin attacks Ichika to take his crown. The dumb idiot soon figures out that Rin means business when multiple daggers are aimed at his face. At some point, he becomes sloppy and falls within Rin's reach. Rin tries to take advantage of her situation, but a shot from Cecil ruins her plan. Cecil is currently wielding a sniper rifle, and she is also after Ichika's crown. About a few hours ago, Tatanashi assembled Rin, Cecil, and the other ladies inside a room. There, she told them that whoever gets the crown from Ichika will get to move to his dorm room. In the present, Cecil recalls Tatanashi's promises and vows to get the crown from Ichika at all costs. She takes a couple of sniper shots at Ichika, but misses since Ichika is hiding behind a door. Charles, watching from a distance, uses Ichika from behind the door into a more secure location. She acts all friendly to the point where she politely asks Ichika to give her his crown. Ichika, being as foolish as he is, takes off the crown to give it to Charles. As a result, 
He gets electrocuted, and he then realizes that he is not supposed to give the crown away. After he recovers, Cecil fires countless shots at him, but he blocks with a bulletproof glass. A knife shot by Rin shatters the glass Ichika is holding and separates him from Charles. Charles recovers from a fall, but struggles to find where Ichika is. Little does she know that she is sitting on his face. As time goes on, Ichika runs away from Charles and makes it to the top of a building. There, he finds Laura, who also wants to take his crown. Laura quickly attacks Ichika, but Tatanashi makes things more chaotic by shooting a missile at them. Despite Laura's goal to get the crown, Ichika protects her from the missile. He manages to get out of the building with Laura safely. Once they reach the ground, Ichika says goodbye to Laura and runs for his life. Soon after, he makes a stop at a dark spot to catch his breath. Here, Huki meets up with him and leads the way to a building's top. After Ichika climbs to the top, Huki politely asks for his crown. Tadanashi, watching from a distance, decides to make things harder by triggering a door to release a large rock rolling toward Huki. Startled, Ichika grabs Huki and rushes to safety to avoid being crushed. Once the rock passes, Ichika asks Huki why everyone is after his crown. Before Huki can answer, Laura arrives and a fight breaks out. Meanwhile, the idiot who is supposed to be running for his life stays back to separate the fight. As time passes, the rock reaches the lower part of the building, opening a door for more girls to join the scene. The students are now after Ichika just for his crown and the dorm room reward. Ichika is somewhere running from a bunch of ladies with no clue as to why they are after him. During the chase, someone reaches out to him and pulls him into a hidden room. The person in question is none other than Reiko, the corporate lady from earlier. When asked what she is doing at the site, Reiko replies by saying that she wants Ichika's IS unit. Her reply shocks Ichika to the extent that he fails to block a nasty kick from her. Things get pretty heated as Reiko and Ichika activate their units to fight against themselves. Ichika manages to dodge the first attack aimed at him only by a close margin. The way he moves makes Reiko fully activate her personal IS to up her chances of winning. While in combat, Ichika gets curious and questions Reiko about who she is. I'm from an evil organization, Reiko replies Ichika. Ichika is not quite having it at this point because he feels that Reiko is joking with him. However, things get serious when Reiko states that she is from the Phantom Task organization. Ichika goes head to head with Reiko and manages to hold it down with her. He blocks her attacks while landing impressive counterattacks on her. Their activities in the room draw Chifuyu's attention as she watches from behind a screen. She quickly tells Maya to watch out for enemy reinforcements because she feels that another threat might be on the way. In the meantime, Rin and the other lovebirds wonder where Ichika went off to. An announcement from Maya causes the ladies to snap back to reality as they find out that Ichika is in danger. Maya tells the ladies to be on standby for orders since they have personal IS units. Chifuyu orders Cecil to be on the lookout while Laura and the others are to support Ichika in battle. Still, in the battle against Reiko, Ichika recalls his previous training with Tatanashi. He implements the lessons he learned from the training to easily dodge Reiko's shots while maintaining circular speed. When Reiko runs out of bullets, Ichika accelerates instantly to finish her off in a single strike. However, Reiko counters and restrains him in thick spider webs. While Ichika struggles to move, he watches as Reiko implants a device on him that will rid him of his IS unit. The device electrocutes him to the extent that he yells in pain. While he is at it, Reiko tells him that it was the Phantom Task organization that kidnapped him in the past. This alone instills anger in Ichika's heart, but there is little he can do. Before things can get worse, Tadanashi appears at the scene to fight Reiko. Shocked, Reiko wonders how tight Nashi got to her position, but she wastes no time to stab her in the chest. Outside the building is Cecil and Rin scouting the perimeter. At some point, Cecil spots an enemy IS moving at high speed to their position. On first contact with the enemy IS, Cecil expresses shock because it looks much like hers but with modifications. It appears that the IS is being wielded by M, who attacked the Academy days ago. Despite being outnumbered, M easily destroys missiles from Cecil and Rin respectively. When it is her turn to attack, Cecil and Rin find themselves on full defense. Meanwhile, Ichika dreads the fact that Tatanashi was just stabbed in front of him. Tatanashi, on the other hand, smiles while still impaled by Reiko's tentacle. It turns out that she cloned herself just to fool Reiko. Tatanashi has her personal IS unit that can control water. She uses it to block all of Reiko's attacks without breaking a sweat. For someone so good looking, it is easy to underestimate her. Reiko makes this mistake, but Tatanashi schools her on the fact that only the most powerful are given the title of student council president. Enraged, Reiko goes all out on Tatanashi by landing an attack that leaves her target defenseless. As Tatanashi struggles to get up, she tells Ichika to let her handle things with Reiko. Sadly, Reiko charges after her and throws her to the other side of the room. She easily gets engulfed by Reiko's webs to the extent that she can't move. Tatanashi finds herself smiling even as Reiko prepares a nasty blast to finish her off. For some reason, the atmosphere in the room becomes humid and hot. Reiko notices this and breaks down because she knows she is done. At the snap of Tatanashi's fingers, Reiko's suit begins 
begins breaking down from the inside. Ichika is now free of Reiko's webs and he prepares to land the kill strike. In his first attempt, he fails to deal enough damage and as such, Reiko escapes the room. When Ichika catches up to Reiko, he sees M flying above him. Tadanashi arrives instantly and warns him not to go after M but the bastard does not listen. Instead, he goes after M and ends up getting shot at. Meanwhile, Laura places Reiko within a barrier to prevent her from escaping. It does not take long for M to render Ichika defenseless and when she does, she flies off to assist Reiko. The only one with the balls to stand against her is Laura, but does not put up that much of a fight. Rather, she watches as her energy barrier around Reiko is torn to shreds. Amid the shock, M receives a transmission from her superior and suspends her battle. After the call, she tells Reiko to fall back to base since they are outnumbered. While M flies off, she rains lots of missiles on Rin. Reiko detaches from her unit, but leaves it with an explosive core. Ichika watches from a distance and speeds off to prevent the core from blasting Laura and the others to bits. All he remembers is seeing a bright light when he wakes up covered in Tatanashi's water-based barrier. Maya and Shifuyu are somewhere in the control room analyzing M's IS unit. Maya has reason to believe that the Phantom Task Organization is after Ichika's IS unit because it holds many mysteries. After she voices out, Chifuyu reveals that she told Tatanashi to train and watch over Ichika because she knew his life would be at risk. Elsewhere, Reiko rages out at M and attacks her because she feels violated. Before things can get messy, their superior Squall arrives and ends the heated alteration. M is quite reserved and she does not speak so much. When she reaches her room, the only thing on her mind is getting her revenge and finally reuniting with Chifuyu. Back at the academy, Tatanashi tells Ichika about her assignment from Chifuyu. After explaining everything to the wasted seaman, she pulls up the crown that the other girls were fighting for. A few words about the crown makes Ichika realize that he is in deep shit because Tatanashi will become his new roommate. Weeks after the previous attack, Ichika charges through a hidden part of the academy's main building following a strange map. He arrives at his destination in search of Maya, his assistant homeroom teacher. The room is quite dark, and while he tries to make sense of things, the door gets shut behind him. Just then, beings dressed in black spandex outfits attack and try to restrain Ichika. At first, Ichika puts up a good fight, but he gets overpowered and outnumbered. He regains consciousness after some minutes and finds himself strapped to a chair. When the lights come on, Ichika sees Maya dressed in a rather weird, animalistic costume. The screen in front of Ichika reads, Ichika Servicing Competition and Maya explains the whole concept to Ichika. According to her, each contestant gets to choose what to do, and the one who pleases Ichika the most is the winner. The first contestant on the list is none other than Huki, who reveals herself dressed in a fox-like costume. On seeing Ichika, Huki becomes uncomfortable because she has not been in such a costume before. Ichika is allowed on stage with Huki so he can be served and attended to. At first, Huki feels shy in close contact with Ichika, but she loosens up a bit when Ichika compliments her tea. Everything goes smoothly, but Huki Huki mistakenly spills hot tea on Ichika's lap. Startled, Huki rushes to tend to Ichika's burns, and she apologizes for being sloppy. Ichika does not mind the burn, rather, he is fixated on staring at Huki's beauty. Maya ruins the moment by telling Huki that her time with Ichika is over. Now Huki has to back off so that other ladies after her can get a turn with Ichika. It goes dark for a moment, but when the lights come back on, Ichika finds himself sitting next to Cecil. It's Cecil's turn to please Ichika, and she does not intend to hold back. She wishes to show Ichika how to play Black Bull so she can foster physical contact with him. It all goes well between the two, as Cecil hits a couple of balls down the drain. Meanwhile, Huki watches everything that goes on from a distance with loads of jealousy in her heart. When it is time for Ichika to take a shot at the last piece, Cecil offers to help him with his form. We all know how Cecil can be at times in situations like this. Let's just say that what you are guessing is right. After the intense urge controlling session, Cecil tells Ichika that she would like to have private time with him in the future. Moving on, Charles gets a turn to serve and please Ichika. In the quest to excite Ichika, Charles goes to the extremes, and she ends up getting a red card from Maya. Rin, watching all that is happening from a screen, lashes out in anger because she does not want Charles to have her way with Ichika. While she is at it, Laura begs her to zip her outfit. After Laura leaves, another person enters the room, and her presence shocks Rin. As time passes, Laura plays a dart game with Ichika. She makes her first shot and gets a gift from a vending machine in return. Ichika, on the other hand, makes his target too, defiling all odds. Sadly, his gift is a little inappropriate because it is Laura's swimsuit. Laura feels a little shy at this point because she was not expecting a gift like that to pop up. Her time elapses with Ichika and the lights go off. Suddenly, Ichika gets pulled away from the scene by Tatanashi to a private room. To round everything up, Tatanashi tried to tease Ichika but she failed. Rin arrived and tried to fight her because she stole her costume. In the end, Ichika finds himself stuck on the wall by multiple daggers aimed by his lovers. The last person on the list to please Ichika is none other than Chifuyu. 
Ichika's uptight sister. She is dressed in a maid's costume, and her presence shocks Ichika and the other girls. Don't say a word or I'll kill you, is the first thing Chifuyu tells Ichika after appearing on stage. She then feeds Ichika some sweet parfait. At the same time, the inscription on the screen above changes to birthday party for Ichika. After reading this, Ichika realizes that he almost missed his birthday. Happy birthday, Ichika, all the ladies chant in unison. It turns out that Huki and Rin suggested surprising Ichika because he always misses his birthday. However, the weird outfits were all Laura's idea, as she reveals that Clarissa told her it was a good way to tease Ichika. After hearing this, Ichika smiles and thanks all of them for surprising him. Hitmaya gets too comfortable around Chifuyu, and almost makes the mistake of complimenting her for previously dressing up like a maid. She then resorts to asking Ichika which one of his maidens won the Ichika-pleasing competition. Now, Cecil, Huki, and the other girls are eager to know who will be the winner. Sadly, Ichika picks Chifuyu as the winner. The look on their faces screams disappointment, but Ichika is too dumb to realize why they are pissed. As a result, he gets his arse handed to him and ends up walking back to his dorm room alone. On the way, he notices someone following him and turns around to see who it is. The person in question is none other than M the girl from Phantom Task Organization. Upon seeing M, Ichika calls her by his sister's name, but M declines the name stating that she is Oromura Madoka. The similar surnames help Ichika to connect the dots in his mind. Before the fool can make sense of his situation, he sees that M is holding a gun aimed at him. A bullet fired from M's gun forces Ichika to deploy a part of his IS unit to protect himself. The next shot from M's gun is negated by Laura's energy barrier, leaving M shocked. Laura is quite pissed at this point because M is after her supposed wife, Ichika. She goes after her but fails to recall that M has the more advanced IS unit. M ends things with her by firing lots of missiles to the ground. After the smoke clears out, Ichika and Laura find out that M is gone. Ichika recovers soon after but is not spared from Laura's questions. He easily dodges the subject matter by complimenting Laura's left eye. The way he says this brings out Laura's feminine side, but she snaps out of it when she finds herself saying sweet words to Ichika. And what does Ichika get? A power punch to the face that knocks the insensitive idiot out. The following evening, Charles and Ichika watch over a shipment heading for the academy. Previously, Charles met with Huki and the other ladies, but they were too busy to help her on the mission. Now, she feels bad for asking Ichika because he was recently attacked. Meanwhile, Ichika looks happy to help with her mission. Soon, an explosion reeks the area drawing Ichika and Charles' attention. A truck arrives at the scene carrying a pair of IS-wielding hostiles. Ichika and Charles waste no time in engaging the hostiles to keep things from escalating. Ichika goes head-to-head -head with one of the hostiles while Charles fights the other one in midair. Charles evades lots of missiles coming at her and still manages to knock her opponent out. Meanwhile, Ichika is still busy fighting off an opponent far less powerful than he is. Finally, he pins his opponent to the ground and tells him to surrender. The other IS wielder recovers briefly and fires countless shots at Charles, but he misses his target. As a result, some part of the shipment explodes and Ichika dives to protect Charles from getting barbecued. The following day, Huki and the others check on Ichika to see if he is fine. Earlier that day, Chifuyu and Maya did a check on Ichika to see what was up with him. Back then, they found out that Ichika's vitals were normal, but his IS unit was having some issues deploying. As a result, Ichika was forced to submit his IS unit to Chifuyu for check and maintenance. Maya, who was there at the time, suggested that Ichika keeps everything a secret from the other girls, so it does not cause an uproar. Charles felt the same way too, and she vowed to protect Ichika. In the present, Charles reflects on her promise, but can't help but listen to Laura's lecture about a certain type of underwear. While listening to them, Charles begins acting weird, and she excuses herself from the class. When she makes it to a certain point, she figures out that part of her clothes have vanished. She then recalls Ichika's issue issue with his IS unit, and wonders if the same thing is happening to her clothes. Shocked, she retires back to her dorm room to try something out, but it does not work. Ichika arrives in front of her door to take her to class, but she ends up being uncomfortable with him. Since they are both late for class, Ichika holds her hands and makes a run for it. During lunch break, Charles sits beside Huki to eat. She gets a different feeling as she sits on her chair, because she is not quite used to her situation down there. Even when playing ball with Rin, she falls behind because she does not want the ladies to find out what's up with her. As time passes, Ichika helps Charles to carry a box of books. Laura passes at the time and finds out about Charles' situation. Shocked, she calls Clarissa to find out what is going on, but pervy Clarissa gives her an absurd lecture on the concept of invisible underwear. Now one can say that Clarissa has a PhD in pervertism because of the way she speaks. Thankfully, Laura can calm her nerves down after listening to Clarissa's diabolical rants. Moving on, Ichika and Charles arrive at the library where they drop off the box they were previously carrying. As Ichika walks away, Charles exhales because she managed to keep Ichika from finding out about her condition. 
She feels that Ichika will not see her the same way if he finds out. On the way out of the library, she mistakenly says something about Ichika's secret and her other girls over here. At first, Charles tries to pretend like she did not say anything, but it is too late. Later that day, Rin, Huki, and the others, except for Charles, attack Ichika because he said nothing about his malfunctioning IS unit. At first, Cecil volunteers to protect Ichika herself, but Rin feels that she is most suited for the job. As a result, a fight erupts, and Ichika finds himself running away from the room with Charles. He gets cornered, but Tatanashi arrives and joins the scene. She reveals her intention to protect Ichika, but the other girls aren't happy about it. When Rin and the others remember that Tatanashi is the strongest student in the academy, they power down and shamelessly accept defeat. Tatanashi even punishes them for destroying academy property. At sunset, Charles relaxes with Ichika, watching Cecil and the others serve their punishments. Ichika then leaves to meet Shifuyu, feeling responsible for the mess Charles caused. Charles feels guilty and considers telling Ichika her secret. She remembers a time when, as a child, she broke a mirror precious to her mother. Although scared, her mother forgave her, saying she was more precious than the mirror. Reflecting on this, Charles decides to show Ichika the truth. Before she can, Laura arrives, stopping her. Meanwhile, Chifuyu and Maya finish repairing Ichika's IS unit. Maya explains that an add-on from a previous shipment caused the malfunction. Chifuyu believes the hostels are unrelated to the Phantom Task Organization and sees them as corporate spies. Later that evening, Charles confesses to Laura about her underwear issue. While Laura finds it funny, she suggests a solution that Charles doesn't like. Later that evening, a student named Kanzashi sits in a lab working on her personal IS unit. Things do not seem to be going well on her part, and as such, she gets up and leaves the lab. As she walks away, Tadanashi stays hidden and watches from a distance. The following day, a student named Mayazumi meets up with Huki and Ichika, asking them for a favor. She wants them to do an interview with her older sister who works for a publishing company. She feels that Ichika and Huki are right for the job because they both have personal IS units. Rin snoops in and tries to show off some cool pictures she took in the past. All this is just for her to convince Ichika that she can be a model too. However, she does not get a chance to show off her entire gallery because Chifuyu is around. In a different class, Kanzashi works on the data aspect of her IS unit. While she is at it, her mates gossip about her intentions to join the upcoming tournament for personal IS unit wielders. They wonder if Kanzashi will finish up her unit in time before the tournament begins. Kanzashi overhears the whole thing, but puts up a facade of composure. Later that day, Huki trains at the dojo. Ichika, who is with her at the time, questions her if she will consider taking Mayuzumi's offer. At first, her reply is no, but when Mayuzami arrives and states that she will get a free dinner at a well-known restaurant, she changes her mind immediately. In Mayuzumi's absence, Ichika wonders why Huki changed her mind so fast. Little does he know that Huki intends to have a private date session with him. At nighttime, Kanzashi watches an anime where a hero protects a lady from an evil lord. She wishes to have someone like the hero who will always watch and save her when the need arises. The next morning, Mayuzumi's sister, Nagisako, receives Huki and Ichika at her company. After the necessary introductions, she begins the interview and places a recording device on a table. She questions Ichika about his experience in an all-girls school, but ends up asking Huki questions about Tabane. Huki does not feel comfortable with the question since she does not have a good relationship with her elder sister, but she tries her best to answer accordingly. When asked who is stronger, Huki is first to raise her hand. Ichika settles for being the guy who always tries to protect his team causing Nagisako to address him as a hero. After the interview ends, Huki makes herself believe that Ichika was referring to her when he said, I'll protect my team. Excitement makes her punch a metallic locker till it dents into the shape of her fist. When she sees the dress she needs to wear for the photo shoot, she becomes stunned. However, she prepares to put it on since she has no choice. After she is done changing, she meets up with Ichika in a studio. Ichika upon seeing her gets up on his feet, but he runs out of words to say. You look good in the suit, Huki tells Ichika while locking her eyes on the ground. Finally, shy Ichika summons up the courage to compliment Huki's dress. The photo shoot session begins as Nagisako tells them to pose. At first, Nagisako allows the couple to take the first shot at random, but she settles for a more romantic pose in the end. After she is done doing her thing, she thanks the couple for their time and leaves the studio. Later that evening, Ichika walks Huki back to the academy. On the way, Huki thinks about one of the romantic poses she struck with Ichika back at the studio. She wishes to have another opportunity like that, but with no external parties. However, she snaps back into reality when she trips and grabs onto Ichika. It turns out that she is not used to wearing hills, which is why she fell. Ichika helps to regain herself, but she fails to walk properly because of a sprained ankle. As a result, Ichika offers to carry Huki all the way to her dorm room. On the way, Huki thanks Ichika for the kind gesture, 
but the annoying bastard replies by saying that he is there to protect. This alone excites Huki, and she ends up whispering, I love you, before falling asleep. Elsewhere, Squall enters M's room pissed about the fact that M attacked Ichika out of the blue. M remains silent even as her boss is in the room, and this provokes Squall to attempt an attack on her. As much as Squall manages to pin Mai to the ceiling, M's cannons aim at her ready to take a shot. After M gets down, she states that she will be back in the game only when she settles things with Ichika. However, Squall makes the mistake of mentioning Chifuyu's name, and this upsets M once again. Annoyed, M attacks Squall and warns her not to underestimate Chifuyu ever in her life because they can never be on the same level. After hearing this, Squall quietly takes the L and leaves the room to go back to sleep. Back in the academy, Ichika walks back to his dorm room thinking about what M said to him a few days ago. On the way, she stumbles into Chifuyu and questions her if they have a little sister. Chifuyu's answer is no, before walking away from the scene. The following day, Chifuyu tells her students that tag matches will be held in the academy to allow personal IS wielders to improve their skills. Her reason stems from the fact that the academy has been attacked multiple times in the past. During a free period, Charles offers Ichika a full pack of homemade food. Ichika enjoys the meal and even compliments Charlie's cooking. Rin arrives at the scene too, bearing a meal for Ichika to try out. Ichika tries them out and compliments her too. Now Rin and Charles are at each other hoping to fight for Ichika's validation. At some point, Charles asks Ichika to know what kind of a partner he would like for the tag tournament coming up soon. Charles and Rin take note of what Ichika says since they both want to be his tag partner. As time passes, Ichika heads to his room only to find Tadanashi waiting for him inside. Tadanashi's presence in the room shocks Ichika, but he listens to what she has to say. Tadanashi begs Ichika to take care of her little sister. He holds out a picture of her sister and she turns out to be Kenzashi. She then states that Kenzashi does not have a personal IS unit and blames it on Ichika. According to her, Ichika's IS unit delayed Kenzashi's IS unit's development since they were made by the same company. Ichika feels sorry for everything, and he agrees to team up with Kenzashi for the upcoming tag tournament. Later that day, Laura orders Ichika to team up with her for the tournament, but she finds out that Ichika has picked someone else. Pissed, Laura tries to pull a fast one on Ichika, but Shifuyu appears from nowhere and negates the attack. Chifuyu then violates Laura by saying that she will never let someone so violent be her sister-in-law. These comments destroy Laura's mood as she sits sadly on the floor. At sunset, Ichika enters into a sparring contest with Huki. Huki dominates the match, making Ichika assume the defensive for the most part. After the match, Huki smiles in the locker room, happy that she beat Ichika again. She is sure that Ichika will pick her as a partner over the other girls. Cecil, on the other hand, feels that Ichika will pick her over the other girls too. The following day, Ichika heads to Kanzashi's class to talk to her. Kanzashi is the rather cold type, so she responds to Ichika only saying a few words. Ichika politely asks her to be his partner for the tag tournament, and she replies by saying no. I have the right to hit you, Kanzashi tells Ichika as she stands up from her seat. After hearing this, Ichika finds out that Kanzashi holds a grudge against him. Later that day, Kanzashi works on her personal IS unit, but she makes no visible progress. She ends up comparing herself to her sister, assuming that she would have done better. She also blames her situation on Ichika's IS unit, since she believes that she would have been done with hers if it weren't for it. After she finishes at the lab, she heads off to her dorm room. On the way, Ichika meets up with her and begs her to be his partner again. However, Ichika manages to strike a nerve and as such he gets slapped in the face. When he returns to his dorm room, Tatanashi sneaks up on him to see what he is up to. Here, she sees that Ichika is looking up stuff on his computer that will help with Kenzashi's IS unit. It is also at this point that Tatanashi tells Ichika that Kenzashi is trying to build her IS unit all by herself. Tatanashi feels this way because she built her IS unit herself and Kenzashi is trying to do the same. When asked about Kenzashi, Ichika replies by saying, that she slapped him. Tatanashi expresses shock at what Ichika says because Kenzashi rarely acts out. Now, she has reason to believe that Ichika has a shot with her sister. Meanwhile, Kenzashi is somewhere in her room regretting why she hit Ichika. The following day, Cecil hones her skills in the training arena to make Ichika pay for not picking her as his partner. Word quickly spreads in class that Ichika is pairing up with Kenzashi from class 4. Even Rin intends to upgrade her suit to its limits so she can make Ichika pay for not picking her. Charles is somewhere training in an arena to make sure that she gives Ichika a tough match. Meanwhile, Laura sharpens a blade she intends to use in raining pain and terror on poor Ichika. She gets violent and stabs her locker only to find out that Ichika's picture behind it is ruined. As a result, she breaks down trying to pull the dagger out. Elsewhere, Huki trains with a real sword in the dojo, wishing to spare Ichika by making his defeat quick. Tatanashi arrives at the dojo shortly and asks Huki to be her tag partner. Huki agrees and falls prey to some lame body check from Tatanashi. Later that day, while the girls are plotting their evil, Ichika enters the room. On seeing him, they brighten up a bit, but when he asks about Kanzashi, 
they revert to their resting faces. Nonetheless, Ichika is too foolish to figure out why the ladies are acting cold towards him. He convinces himself that the tournament must be tense, and then runs off to do his thing. Kanzashi arrives at the hangar shortly, and deploys her personal IS unit for a test run, while in mid-air she evaluates various sections of her suit to scan for errors. It all goes well for her, as she manages to reach supersonic speed in no time. Ichika arrives at the training arena looking for her. He takes his head up, only to find her flying high in the atmosphere. Soon, Kenzashi's IS unit fails and begins to lose altitude. As much as Kenzashi tries to re-establish her suit, nothing works, and she gives up in the end. Ichika, watching from ground level, deploys his IS unit and catches Kenzashi before she can fall to the ground. After the smoke clears out, Kenzashi freaks out when she sees that Ichika is the one who saved him. She blames herself for her suit malfunctioning, but Ichika tells her not to be too hard on herself. Finally, Kanzashi thanks Ichika for saving her at the training arena. She also agrees to have lunch with Ichika at the cafeteria. While they are at it, Ichika feeds Kanzashi part of his food, and she eats it. However, she declines to give Ichika part of her food when he asks. Later that day, Kanzashi finds herself thinking about Ichika while listening to a teacher. At some point, she sees a golden version of Ichika politely asking her to team up with him. The way Ichika speaks to her makes her see him as the hero in her favorite anime, and she agrees in the end. This alone excites Ichika, and he wastes no time in taking Kanzashi to sign some documents. That evening, Ichika joins Kenzashi at her lab to take a look at her IS unit. After analyzing the unit, he agrees to give Kenzashi some data from his unit that will help smoothen things on her end. Now, Kenzashi is into Ichika because of how thoughtful he is. It goes on to the extent that she allows Ichika to call her by her first name. Kenzashi runs off to her dorm room since she is shy. Her heart is racing at this point, but she is glad that she said what she said. I might be in love, she says to herself while leaning on her door. The following day, a bunch of ladies arrive at the lab to assist Kanzashi with her IS unit. Ichika ends up running errands, ranging from carrying scanners, cutters, wave checkers, and even shampoo. Towards the end of the day, the students round up things with Kanzashi's unit and leave the lab. Kanzashi is most excited to see the result, and she thanks Ichika for the help. As time passes, Ichika freshens up in his shower and comes out only to find Tadanashi on his bed. Although shocked, Ichika agrees to give her a massage. While at it, Tadanashi brings up a conversation about Chifuyu and her relationship with Ichika. She has reason to believe that Chifuyu cares deeply about Ichika, despite being too harsh on the foolish boy. Meanwhile, Kanzashi approaches Ichika's dorm room with freshly baked cakes. At six feet away from Ichika's door, Tatanashi steps out, clinging onto Ichika, talking about Ichika's progress with Kanzashi. This alone shocks Kanzashi as she hides behind a wall to prevent herself from being seen. She leans in silence as she learns that Tatanashi is behind Ichika coming to meet her and everything else. Heartbroken, Kanzashi drops the cakes on the ground and runs off crying to her dorm room. She cries emotionally in her dorm room and fills a part of the floor with tears. The following morning, Kanzashi wakes up remembering her sorrows from the previous day. She hides her face in tears when she recalls seeing her sister with Ichika the previous evening. Later that morning, Ichika heads to her class, only to find out that she is not around. Other students gather at the assembly hall listening for Tatanashi to to declare the tag tournament open. While Tatanashi speaks, Ichika looks for Kenzashi in the crowd, but does not find her. Meanwhile, Kenzashi is somewhere in a lab hiding from Ichika. She is sad about all that has happened to her mostly because she considers herself incompetent and in the shadow of her elder sister. At some point, she snaps out of her thoughts and decides to go and join the other students. Ichika is somewhere in the hallway looking for her. While he is at it, the school falls under the attack of unmanned IS units. Shifuyu gets the intel from Maya and issues an order for the students to be evacuated. Rin and Cecil are currently outside engaging one of the unmanned units. Despite their combined forces, they struggle to defeat it. Even Laura, who is considered stronger than them all, struggles to hold off a single unmanned unit. Charles swoops in from nowhere and prevents her from taking a direct hit from the enemy. In the meantime, Kanzashi arrives at the hangar to find out what's going on. Here, an unmanned unit arrives at her position to kill her. As the unit draws closer to her, she almost pisses her panties in fear of imminent death. She seems quite helpless and ends up calling on Ichika's name just as the enemy tries to take her out. Fortunately, Ichika arrives with his unit and uses it to hold the unmanned unit off. While Ichika holds off the enemy, he tells Kanzashi to deploy her unit and flee. At first, she agrees to leave, but on second thought, she decides to stay back and assist Ichika. Ichika lets her in on the battle under the condition that she maintains a safe distance from the enemy. Moving on, Tadanashi assists Laura by engaging an unmanned unit. She struggles to break past the unit's armor, even with her maxed speed. Puki assists her in flight by giving an extra push, but it does little damage to the unmanned unit. In the quest to defeat the unmanned unit, 
Tadanashi sacrifices part of her armor. However, she falls victim to some cuts from the enemy, but then makes a joke about being immortal when Huki calls her out on it. Finally, Tadanashi goes all out on the enemy and ends up blowing it to bits. The explosion draws Ichika's attention. Kenzashi faces off another unmanned unit by herself in Ichika's absence. It gets to a point where she finds out that her sister is in critical condition because of the explosion. Enraged, Kenzashi goes berserk on the unmanned unit and attacks it with brute force. She loses her weapon while she is at it, but that does not stop her from beating the shit out of the enemy. Upon reaching the ground, she rips off the arms of the unmanned unit and lands an explosive shot on its remains. After the smoke clears out, Kenzashi finds out that she is out of energy. Another unmanned unit approaches her from behind to finish her off. The enemy aims an already unconscious Ichika at Kenzashi and walks closer to their bodies. Kenzashi, seeing that Ichika is out, fears that she is done for. She feels helpless at this point, and even goes as far as considering herself useless. As the enemy tries to rip her apart, Tatanashi arrives and takes her place. Shocked, Kanzashi holds on to her dear sister, who hands her a good luck charm. The charm is none other than an explosive device straight from Tatanashi's IS unit. In the meantime, Huki calls Ichika straight out of his unconsciousness. After he gets up, he reveals that his suit is out of energy. With this in mind, Huki intends to get Ichika all charged up. However, an encounter with another unmanned unit slows things up for her. Kanzashi volunteers to take Huki's place so she can help Ichika out. She goes head to head with an unmanned unit, allowing Huki to charge Ichika's unit. Kanzashi puts up a good fight against the enemy, but falls victim to a positional trap. Before she can get hit by beam blasts, Huki arrives and erects an energy barrier. Following that, Huki takes an armor-piercing shot at the enemy and manages to rip off its arms. Ichika flies from below and lands a nasty attack on the enemy, while Kanzashi fires countless missiles on the enemy's remains. Shockingly, the unmanned unit does not go offline, but a signal from Tatanashi's charm detonates the enemy. Rin and the other girls finish off the other unmanned units almost at the same time leaving the academy in a safe condition. At sunset, Tatanashi regains consciousness and finds herself lying next to her sister. She feels quite sad because she has not really been the best sister to Kanzashi. Kanzashi feels the same way too, and she is the first to apologize. A hug and a promise settle a long-lasting beef between them. Later that evening, Maya reports to Chifuyu about her findings on the unmanned units. She has reason to believe that the enemy units were using unregistered cores. After Chifuyu hears this, she tells Maya to inform the government about her findings. At first, Maya hesitates, but Chifuyu assures her that she can protect the academy from external threats. The following morning, Kanzashi stands in front of Ichika's dorm room wishing to say how she feels. When allowed to speak, she makes the mistake of saying that she loves anime. It is when she runs off and thinks about what she said that she realizes that she made a mistake. Later that morning, Uki, Laura, Cecil, and Rin are up against Kanzashi trying to figure out the kind of relationship she has with Ichika. As much as Kanzashi wishes to have a personal relationship with Ichika, she is not there yet. When she voices out, the girls calm down since they feel that Kanzashi is no longer a threat. They even go as far as accepting her into their group and allowing her to train with them. As time passes, Ichika finds out that he needs to measure all the girls in school to record data on their sizes. Maya informs him that the academy needs the data to reinforce IS units according to the students' sizes. When asked why he is the one taking the measurements, Maya replies by saying that it is a direct order from the student council. Upon hearing this, Ichika realizes that Tatanashi is the one behind everything. The scumbag makes a fuss about his situation and blames his actions on Tatanashi. Chifuyu arrives and scolds him on the matter, but does not fail to give him a blindfold to help him out. In her absence, Ichika finds out that he can see through the blindfold. Now, all the girls are assembled in a queue, ready to get measured by Ichika. When Rin and the other lovebirds find out that Ichika is the one measuring the whole school, they become violent. Any last words? Laura asks Ichika while holding a sharp dagger to his throat. Towards midday, Ichika sits in a field with Rin, Cecil, and Huki. The ladies present at the time look worried because they have put on a few pounds. Rin, being a late bloomer, wishes to get more mass in, you know where. Meanwhile, Ichika is currently snacking, and the other girls find out that the meal is from Huki. Pissed, Cecil decides that she will never let her guard down when around Huki, so she does not take the spotlight. Meanwhile, Ichika compliments Hoki's cooking, and also goes on to compliment Rin's cooking too. He struggles to compliment Cecil despite being under intense pressure. Rin makes things worse by whispering to Ichika to tell Cecil how he truly feels about her cooking. Cecil feels insecure at this point because she cannot figure out what Rin is saying to Ichika. Charles and Laura arrive in no time to join in on the fun. Later that evening, Cecil arrives at Huki's dorm room holding a sack with a live chicken inside. 
She wishes to learn a thing or two from Huki in terms of cooking. At first, Huki hesitates to let her in, but she does after Cecil asks nicely. As time goes on, Huki begins the cooking process and shows Cecil how things are done in the kitchen. Cecil struggles to mimic Huki's steps, but she gets corrected on the way. When Huki is almost done cooking the meal, she leaves Cecil in the kitchen to check something out. In her absence, Cecil takes it upon herself to spray the meal with some perfume and apply makeup on it to improve the overall scent and color respectively. Huki arrives in the kitchen shortly and makes the mistake of tasting the meal. The following day, Maya and other students in Ichika's class find out that Huki is not available. Ichika knows that it is quite rare for Huki to be sick, and even Charles confirms that Huki was fine when she called her the previous night. Later that evening, Cecil arrives at Charles's dorm room to learn how to cook her signature dish. Charles agrees and lets her in under the condition that she keeps things quiet because Laura is fast asleep. Everything goes well in the kitchen, but when Cecil reveals that Huki taught her how to cook the previous night, she becomes shocked. Charles has reason to believe that Huki became sick after eating Cecil's meal, but she calms down and assumes that she is overthinking. She then makes the mistake of leaving Cecil in the kitchen to do something in the bedroom. In her absence, Cecil looks at the dish and assumes that it is not colorful enough. Charles gets back into the kitchen after tucking Laura back in bed. After seeing that the dish looks delicious, she takes a spoon to taste it. Later that night, Laura wakes up and enters the kitchen. Here, she assumes that Charles cooked and left loads of food for her. The next morning, Ichika finds out that Charles and Laura are absent from class. Even Cecil attests that Laura went to sleep early the previous night and she seemed pretty fine to her. Following that, she offers to treat Ichika to some lunch the following day. Ichika expresses shock at the offer, but finds it hard to decline. As a result, Cecil happily leaves Ichika looking forward to having lunch with Ichika the next day. While she walks away, Kanzashi walks into the class and offers Ichika a plate of food for lunch. Ichika likes the food, and as such, Cecil becomes jealous. As a result, she settles in Rin's dorm room in the evening to learn how to cook a dish. Meanwhile, Rin is vigilant about Cecil, because she feels she is a walking time bomb if allowed in the kitchen. At first, she declines Cecil's request, but after some intensive persuasion, she agrees. It all goes well with Rin in the kitchen till the meal is almost ready. Rin desires a larger fire source to get the food's taste right. When she voices out, Cecil deploys one of her cannons and aims it at the pot. The following day, Cecil meets up with Ichika at a field and apologizes for not being able to serve him lunch. She gives an excuse that the food she cooked the previous night exploded, and she doesn't know why it did. Despite being shocked, Ichika suggests cooking his favorite dish with Cecil. Later that afternoon, Ichika shows Cecil how to cook in his kitchen. There, he maintains physical contact with Cecil in the quest to teach her. This alone excites Cecil, and she begs Ichika to show her the way again so she can be in close contact with him. The fool agrees to her offer without figuring out why Cecil asked again. That evening, Squall enjoys dinner with Tabane at a five-star restaurant. At some point, Squall tells Tabane to consider providing IS units for the Phantom Task Organization, but Tabane politely declines. As a result, Reiko points a gun directly to Tabane's head to persuade her to accept Squall's deal. Despite that, Tabane breaks free of Reiko and knocks her out cold. Even M arrives with her IS unit to fight, but stands no chance against Tabane. Tabane lands strategic attacks on M that force her IS unit to retract. Upon seeing M's face, she picks interest in her and accurately guesses her real name. This alone leaves M and Squall shocked, but Tabane offers to make a personal IS for M. Squall does not like the idea at first, but Tabane remains persistent. Days after Cecil's kitchen crisis, the students embark on a road trip to a certain settlement in Japan. On the way, Laura and the girls play a game of cards to determine who gets to be on Ichika's tour group. After Huki loses the game, she finds out that Ichika will not be joining any tour groups since he needs to take pictures of the target location as the representative of his class. The students arrive at their destination and begin sightseeing. At some point, all the students gather in front of Maya and Chifuyu to receive their orders. They are to meet at a certain Kiyomizu temple later in the evening. After the announcement, Maya meets up with Ichika and presents a package for him. Kanzashi arrives shortly and meets Ichika, puzzled about the package. It appears that Ichika is trying to figure out what is in the bag. The bag opens itself after some time, and it turns out that Tatanashi is the package. Shocked, Kanzashi folds her elder sister back into the bag and assists Ichika in sending it back to the academy. Little do they know that the real Tatanashi is behind one of the pillars of the building. As time passes, Cecil observes beautiful scenery and begins saying nice things about the place. Ichika arrives shortly and asks her to strike a pose for a quick shot. After taking a couple of pictures, Cecil itches to see what the pictures look like. 
Upon seeing it, she becomes pissed because the scumbag took poor pictures. Soon, other girls arrive at the scene begging Ichika to take pictures of them. This time, Ichika learns from his mistakes and allows the camera to focus before pressing the capture button. Moving on, Ichika searches for his lens cap under a chunk of wood. Charles arrives shortly and lends a helping hand. Something happens in between that makes Ichika agree to hang out with Charles for a bit. In the meantime, Rin arrives at a shrine, famous for making wishes come true. Here, she wishes that Ichika sees that she has feelings for him. On her way out of the shrine, Cecil walks in and they both try to put on a facade that they are just sightseeing. Meanwhile, Laura arrives paying no attention to them and wishes to have lots of kids. Ichika arrives at the shrine with Charles and the other girls wonder what they are up to. As much as Ichika tries to talk his way out of his situation, Cecil and the other girls become violent and chase after him. At some point, he catches his breath after running for so long. While in town, he meets up with Kanzashi, who is currently dressed in a Japanese traditional outfit. One looks at her and makes Ichika compliment her outfit, and as such, she is left excited. Before Ichika can continue his conversation with Kanzashi, he dodges a knife from Laura. Following that, he turns his head only to find out that Cece, Rin, and Charles are after him too. This alone makes him escape the scene with Kanzashi, but he crashes into Huki on the way. Huki immediately gets the wrong impression when she sees Ichika carrying Kanzashi in his arms. As time passes, Cecil and the other girls enjoy a delicious meal sponsored by Ichika. The little gesture buys Ichika a little bit of freedom from the girl's hostility. On the other hand, Rin thanks Huki for getting a good location. Meanwhile, Huki only wanted to show Ichika the place when he was alone. Moving on, Ichika chills at another side of the settlement watching the scenery. While he is at it, memories of his childhood with Huki and Chifuyu flood his mind, but he snaps out of it when Huki arrives. Huki takes advantage of the fact that Ichika is alone and persuades him to join her in a bamboo forest. Ichika agrees to her offer, and she leads the way accordingly. While in the woods, Huki tells Ichika that she only wants to show him the place. On hearing this, Ichika smiles and reminds her of a time in the past when they used to take walks together. Huki smiles at Ichika because she recalls the good times. Meanwhile, her response makes Ichika remember his encounter with M. His facial expression is enough for Huki to know that something is up, but he ignores speaking on the matter. He then takes her mind off the issue by opting to take a picture of her. As Huki moves to strike a pose, Squall arrives and volunteers taking pictures of them as a couple. It all goes well for a while, but it becomes strange when Squall leaves calling Ichika by his first name. In her absence, Ichika remembers that he did not tell Squall her name. At sunset, all students assemble around a table, awaiting Maya's next instructions. Here, Ichika sees Chifuyu spacing out and then takes a picture of her without her knowledge. At first, Chifuyu tries to make a fuss out of it, but she requests to get a copy of the picture later. In her absence, Charles asks to see the pictures Ichika has taken so far. Other girls watching from a distance arrive at Ichika's position too to have a look. It goes on for a while until Ichika loses grip of the camera and it falls to the ground. When he heads off to get the camera, he encounters M on the way. M intends to kill Ichika and end things once and for all. She deploys her IS for this purpose, leaving Ichika almost pissing on his underwear. Moving on, Cecil stays back to look for Ichika, because he has taken too long to come back. Other students are currently entering the train to head back to school, but Ichika is still missing. Chifuyu receives the news and tries to get off the train to find her brother. The door locks itself and a hacker takes over the train. The hacker is none other than Squall from the Phantom Task Organization. She stands on a tall platform plotting evil against Chifuyu and her students. However, Tadanashi appears in her position and threatens to stop her plans. Enraged, Squall deploys part of her IS unit and uses it to restrain Tatanashi's movement. In the meantime, Kanzashi tries to hack into the train systems to regain control of its hardware. Chifuyu accesses the situation and ends up telling Maya to send a distress message to the military. Meanwhile, Cecil and Huki are still in the settlement searching for Ichika. While they are at it, Reiko arrives at their position and shoots an explosive shot at them. Back at Ichika's position, M states that her true objective is to kill Chifuyu. This alone shocks Ichika to the extent that he reacts slowly to an incoming beam blast. When the smoke clears out, Ichika lies unconscious on the ground, allowing M to go after Chifuyu. Back on the train, Kanzashi finds out that the Phantom Task Organization has taken control of the train, despite her intense hacking attempts. Meanwhile, Tadanashi stands restrained by Squall's IS unit. When Squall reveals that there is a bomb planted on the train, Tadanashi becomes more serious and forces her way out of Squall's reach. She becomes like water and assumes her natural form to catch onto the train. Despite being shocked, Squall chases after Tatanashi in midair. While Tatanashi is in flight, she gets on comms with Kanzashi and tells her about the bomb on the train. Things quickly get worse on the train when Chifuyu, Maya, and the others find out about the bomb. 
Ichika regains consciousness after some time with a strong will to protect his elder sister. Meanwhile, Huki and Cecil are battling it out against Reiko. Eventually, reinforcement from the military arrives at M's position fully equipped with IS units. M looks unfazed, despite being outnumbered by numerous threats. She easily defeats the first unlucky soldier, and her heat signatures catch Kanzashi's attention, and tells Chifuyu about a high-energy unit approaching the train. When Laura hears about this, she insists on going outside to help, but Chifuyu tells her to stay put. Back outside the train, Cecil and Huki engage Reiko in brutal combat. Both of them fight at supersonic speeds, trying to inflict the most damage on Reiko. Tadanashi is currently fighting against Squall in a rather heated combat. She lands a nasty attack on Squall, hoping to finish her off, but Squall puts up a thick barrier to resist her attack. As a result, Squall beats Tadanashi and throws her into the sea. Moving on, M clears out the military reinforcements with ease and flies after Chifuyu's train. At some point, she stops and shoots a nasty beam blast at the train, but Ichika arrives just in time to block it. After the smoke clears out, Ichika assures M that she will not get past him. As he flies off to battle it out, Chifuyu informs him that there is a bomb on the train that will go off very soon. With this in mind, Ichika draws M away from the train, buying Kanzashi enough time to gain control of the train systems. Now Chifuyu gives the order for Laura and Charles to go out and stop the train. Back outside, Huki manages to pin Reiko to the ground. She implies Reiko's unit with both her katanas and flies off, allowing Cecil to take the kill shot. Moving on, Ichika stops evading M's attacks but ends up clashing with her in midair. Their attacks meet at a neutral point, but Ichika intensifies his energy output to overpower M. While he fights, Laura and Huki use their units to stop the train. The bomb's timer reads less than one minute, and this puts all the girls under intense pressure. Fortunately, Kanzashi locates the bomb on the train, and points Charles in the right direction. After Charles locates the bomb, she yells Laura's name. Within seconds, Ichika sees an explosion on the train, and becomes distracted. M does not spare him as she stabs him with her quantum blade. As Ichika falls weak to the ground, Huki flies after him to catch him. Blood spills out of Ichika's mouth while under gravity's influence, and he does not look conscious either. Cecil stays back to take on M by herself. Back on the train, Charles and Laura are looking very much alive because of Laura's energy barrier. It turns out that Laura deployed her barrier and contained the bomb explosion. Now the only thing standing between M and Chifuyu is Cecil. Cecil wishes to hold M off for as long as she can. Her battle with M begins and ends quickly, since she is no match for her. After Cecil passes out, M tries to vaporize her with her weapon, but Charles arrives just in time to prevent this from happening. Laura joins the party too, leaving M shocked. On ground level, Huki tears up while seeing Ichika in his condition. As time passes, Rin and Tatanashi join the other girls in the battle against M despite being outnumbered. M faces missiles, bullets, and even beam blasts from her opponents looking unfazed. Ichika, on the other hand, is somewhere in his subconscious trying to find a way out. The dull bastard sees a version of his sister in an IS unit and begs for him. However, his sister becomes bad and threatens to kill him. As life slips away from Ichika, he tells himself that he cannot afford to die. With this in mind, he begs his IS unit for more power to fight. Back in the present, Charles and Rin land fatal attacks on M almost at the same time. For the first time, M struggles to get up, and while she does, Cecil shoots more beam blasts at her. Despite the numerous explosions, M gets up looking very pissed. Shocked, Laura stands back and shoots an armor-piercing bullet at M, and it causes a nasty explosion. While the smoke clears out, Laura sights Squall and M flying together engulfed within an energy barrier. Shocked, Laura and the other girls charge at them to fight but they get cleared out by an energy shockwave from Squall's unit. While the girls lie weak on the floor, M brags that they will not be able to defeat the Phantom Task Organization. Meanwhile, Tatanashi takes off an active camouflage from her quantum sniper. Despite being miles away, she focuses her lens on Squall's energy barrier and takes a shot at it. The bullet tears through Squall's unit and barrier easily leaving M exposed. Before M can make sense of her situation, Ichika arrives and lands a fatal strike on M. The weakling ends up spearing her past the seas and mountains, intensifying his energy output with each second. At some point, M loses a pendant carrying Chifuyu's face on it. Before Ichika can spear M into the ground, Squall arrives and takes a shot at him. As expected, the weak bastard lies weak on the ground in an important battle. While in midair, Squall tells M to retreat since they have collected a good amount of combat data. As they fly away from the scene, Chifuyu and the other students smile at Ichika and his team. Elsewhere, Tabane sits with an unidentified girl making a joke about Chifuyu enjoying her gift from M. It turns out that they are both responsible for sending the unmanned IS units to attack the academy a few days ago. Later that evening, Ichika chills at a hot spring trying to ease himself of stress. Little does he know that he is in the females section. I'm not really allowed to say much about this, but let's say that what you are thinking is true. 